Bernie Sanders is warning his party that supporting a genocide may cost them the upcoming election. You have to warn your party about genocide? The moment that I have to warn my party about genocide, I'm no longer part of that party. Bernie Sanders in an MSNBC interview was essentially begging Joe Biden to stop sending weapons to Israel. Are you worried about November? Yeah, I am. Well, obviously, no matter what, it's going to be a difficult uh, election, and I'm going to do everything that I can, despite my disagreement with the president uh, over what's going on in Gaza, to make sure that Donald Trump is not elected president of the United States. That would be a, a, a horrific disaster for our country. Uh, but do I think that a lot of young people, you know, people of color, many people, I mean, the polling is very clear. Uh, the Democratic base wants to stop funding for Netanyahu's war machine. So if your question is, is it going to hurt the president unless he turns this around? Yeah, it will. How pathetic is it that Bernie Sanders has to beg the person that he endorsed for president to stop being a criminal? Yes, like I covered many times before, Biden is a criminal who is breaking Leahy's law by sending weapons to a country that is committing mass human rights violations. Hey, but Nick, don't you know that Joe Biden is very upset with Netanyahu? Nick, don't you know that Biden called Netanyahu a bad fucking guy? If Israel goes into Rafa, Biden is going to give Netanyahu a stern talking to. Meanwhile, in reality, Joe Biden sent Israel 2,000 pound bombs as they were drawing up their Rafa plan. Well, Biden did show that he's upset about Israel striking and killing aid workers in Gaza. And Joe Biden said he's not going to change his policy in Gaza, despite Israel purposely targeting aid workers. This is the person that Bernie and the progressive left is trying to sell us as a good faith actor. It's very important to remember that Bernie Sanders is not the good guy in this story. He didn't support a ceasefire until months and months after this conflict. It took thousands and thousands of dead children for Bernie to realize that he was on the wrong side of history after supporting Israel. In terms of a permanent ceasefire, I don't know how you could have a permanent ceasefire with Hamas, who has said before October 7th and after October 7th that they want to destroy Israel. They want a permanent war. I don't know how you have a permanent ceasefire with an attitude like that. Literally no one is falling for the transparent attempt by Bernie Sanders to wash the blood off his hands. It is disgusting. Liar, liar, genocide, denier. Liar, liar, genocide, denier. Israel just killed seven members of the World Central Kitchen that were delivering aid to Gaza in missile strikes that they claimed were unintentional. Now, the World Central Kitchen is a neutral nonprofit that goes to front lines and provides fresh meals. And so far, they've provided over 350 million meals to people who need it all around the world. And of course, the company was with a certain sense of urgency because right now it's Ramadan and they're trying their hardest to get these meals to the Palestinians in Gaza who've been fasting all day and are trying to celebrate their holiday. Now, of course, the sad truth is we're actually used to Israel killing civilians, bombing volunteers, bombing journalists, whoever. But this particular case is truly disturbing. Before we even get into the particulars about what happened, let's talk about the fact that the Mossad tried to blame Hamas out the gate for what took place. They tried to say it appears that they were killed by a bomb planted on the side of the road by Hamas. For real, bro? And hell, maybe if this was a bomb that accidentally exploded that Israel planted on the side of the road, not knowing what route they were taking, this wouldn't be so bad but it's actually much more nefarious. Like I said in the beginning, Netanyahu said that they didn't really mean to kill all those volunteer workers, but that's bullshit. According to Haaretz, a Israeli news publication, they knew that those cars were marked. They knew the organization that those cars belonged to. They knew that those workers were volunteers. They only even looked into what was happening because there was supposedly one armed man that they believed was a terrorist. Oh, but it gets better because before 
the WCK decided to leave on their approved route, a route approved, a safety route approved by Israel, the armed man left the vehicle and never left the warehouse. In other words, none of those vehicles had the man that initiated the suspicions of Israel. And even though they knew that armed man was not with the volunteers on that route that Israel approved, they shot a missile and hit them anyway. Oh, but when the first missile didn't destroy all three of the vehicles, and then the people who have managed to escape the first missile strike switched vehicles, they shot another one. Oh, but when that didn't do the job, even though that armed man still isn't there and they're still on the approved route, they went ahead and shot another one, just in case. And I need y'all to understand this wasn't about killing a few workers who were intent on helping get aid and food to Gaza. This was actually about preventing tons of aid from getting to Gaza. Because after this strike, all the boats turned around and the WCK had to cancel all operations in Gaza. 240 tons of aid will no longer be reaching the mouths that need it. But sure, let's let Netanyahu lie to our fucking faces again and pretend like this wasn't intentional and that wasn't his goal. These people are fucking evil, bro. And they really deserve everything that they got coming to them. <sighs> What's popping? <laughs> What's popping, my friends, my family? I am back. Welcome. We have a special edition, Nick. I know you guys know how to do today. Last time you guys saw me on, on Monday. I, hope you, I apologize I wasn't there for Nick and I for you guys this week. You got to understand, ever since, what was it, fucking four years ago? Well, I quit my job and I would work on the Bernie campaign. Guys, ever since I quit my job and I knocked door to door on thousands of people's doors, I've never had a break. <laughs> it's been non-stop, my friend. I love it. I'm not complaining, man. Like, we went straight from work on the Bernie campaign, starting a mutual aid organization. Before that, I started 10 Demands, even before the Bernie campaign. So I was in abolition work. Then I was on the Bernie campaign. Then we started RBN. Then I started my own mutual aid chapter in Kansas City. Then we did multiple summits. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie, man. It kind of gets to me after a while. Like, I've been nonstop in the trenches. So, like, I realized I've been doing prep talks to myself on this show. <laughs> well, I'm like, guys, it's okay to take a break. Remember, I just did that rant, like, a two weeks ago. I was giving a prep talk to myself. <laughs> I realized I was so burned out. I think it probably was affecting my commentary, maybe. So, I hope you guys don't mind that I took Tuesday and Thursday off. That's why I had to come here with my brother. the My, uh, my hotspot brother <laughs> today. What should we call this? This is, like, the hotspot live. My hey brother, man. we in this bitch is going down. What's popping? My man, <laughs> my man has a son now. My man, it's, yeah, it's, man, means boy, something else now. Like, I tried to, up, uh, boy, he woke up fat as hell this morning, dog. Like, I could barely carry it. I, it was crazy. Like, last night, he was a little bit irritable. Then he woke up and was trying to stand up. Like, he was heavy as hell. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, yeah. I growing up this, fast, bro. This little, this little dude's about to be smart as hell, bro. It's been oh, mentored yeah. by Nico House, man. So <laughs> his I'm glad mom's I, smart too. His mom is 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 hella smart. So yeah, yeah. Nah, he got he that motherfucker is destined for great things, man. He's destined <laughs> for great things. I, hope, I saw man, you. I, I hope that he helps other people fulfill their destiny. That's that's what his name actually. Is. So Lachesis yeah, means basically the decider of fate. That's why I named him that. So. Yeah, that's, that's gonna, be right. gonna be all right. And it's always good to have Nico on RB. We I said all the time before. Before there was RB, there was Nico House, my friends. And it wasn't <laughs> coincidence. I saw you was on Savvy and JB show. We didn't plan that, by the way, because uh, Nico he had a son. You know what I mean? We gotta get get this, this man the time off. I tried my best to Not carry uh, to carry hot yeah, spot on my hey, back. Look, you work for the same people I work for, bro. I tried. I took two weeks off, and that was a problem. God damn it! They were like, "Hey, we need you to come back, dog." We, we, I was going to. I was supposed to take a month off, like, because I was the same way as you, man. You know how it was like, when I started in 2016. I was on the same tip, bro. I was organizing and doing my show and traveling, and bro. And one day, you, I just woke up like, "Yo, nigga, I'm exhausted. What the yeah, I was fuck?" Exhausted. And I. And like you were saying, it did actually start affecting my commentary. I couldn't formulate sentences correctly. Like it was yeah. I, like my research was suffering because like my 
my thought pathways weren't kind of opening the way that they had in the past because I was just exhausted, man. Sometimes I just gotta be like, look, y'all, I love y'all, but and y'all, and y'all, you know, it's great that we have all the support, but bro, we are not machines. We like to think that sometimes, but we can't, you eventually you will burn out if you don't take a break. Yeah. You guys can tell I'm tired because I start mumbling more. <laughs> yeah, but I think I get drills Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm very self aware, guys. I know. I fuck so up. I, like I mean, you, you guys are all tired when I do that. I'm more energetic. Hopefully, I sound better. T- I'll be tired. Like, all right, let's, welcome, nigga. <laughs> I'm fucking tired. Hope you guys enjoyed today. I tried to carry Hotspot on my back. It's not the same without Nico, though. Because he's like, banger, 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 banger. <laughs> like, I come out with no, videos. We got a nice little one two punch going, bro. Honestly, we do. We really yeah. do. Huh? I love working at Hotspot. I love the work that we do. Like, I, I, I was talking shit with uh, RBN for a long time, talking about how we need to get into short videos. Like long streams is good, but we need to reach people with multiple di- uh, different attention spans. Like I maybe watch maybe 30, 40 minutes a show. Like someone had a two hour show, I'll probably watch 30, 40 minutes. And that way, YouTube algor- algorithm show the average person to kind of watch about 30, 40 minutes. Then there's a whole nother uh, segment, uh, a whole nother market where people are more into like two, three minute videos. It's it's so wild, bro. Literally, it's, uh, it's one or the other. It's like they either want to watch the whole hour podcast. Or they only want two minutes and they ain't want to really... If you got like that weird little eight-minute segment, the only really yeah. people that... I mean, yeah, hell, even 20 minutes you can get away with. But like that little five to eight minute, that used to be the prime like time limit yeah. on YouTube. And now like if you try to get away with that shit, you really like... People are like, eh, I'm not going to get enough information for me to sit here for another extra three minutes. <laughs> I'm going to go to the I'll podcast. Be- I'm going to watch that instead. Like I need to, I need the context. Yeah. Nah, I get, I get people get away with the sports sports channels get away with it now with the eight minute videos, but that's about it. Yeah, I get frustrated because I tell you guys I plan one hour shows, but I don't have a producer. I, I, everything you guys see on my show is me, so like I will plan a one hour show. That shit end up being two and a half hours long because I'm like, how do, how do you guys talk about these complex issues in an eight minute video? You know the old, how you do? How are we going to talk about Gaza and Israel in eight minutes on any fucking topic? Like, you know any I mean? day, yeah, for real. <laughs> so. I enjoy this new uh this format that kind of took off. Like I wouldn't there's no way I don't think I, I could ever made it back in the five to eight like minute like era. <laughs> That's not my thing. Yeah. Hot spot is good because I can hit my zingers in two minutes. So I'm good either short or long. Like that why Hey, I- and Nick got I gotta give Nick credit, y'all. It's very, very difficult. So we have an assistant producer that helps pick topics, but like Nick, bro, that motherfucker will have a topic ready every damn morning, like ready to go, <laughs> just like that. And it's actually difficult to find topics yeah, because it's just like you kind of want to figure out what's trending, but like you don't want to do some shit that's already been done. So like it's hard to catch that little wave of like it. I know this is gonna be popular, even it, it may not be trending right now, but I know it's gonna be. And Nick is really good at that, um, trying to figure and balancing it off with both domestic and foreign policy. He's like, yeah, no, nah, he 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 in a way, man. You've been killing it. I was I was like I was okay with taking so much time off because like I was like, oh, Nick got it. He's like, I'm not fucking sure. worried. Like Nick gonna be able to hold it down. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. Big shout out to my, that's another man I gotta get back on show. I now realize I saw you, my my brother. It's been a while since we had Black and Empire on the show. I think the anti imperialist summit. I don't want to bother him too much, but we gotta have you back on, man. Black and Empire are killing the game. So uh they, appreciate the super uh the super sticker. We can read some more some more super chats uh here very soon. Uh but the hot, that's why hot spot like works for me because I all, especially in the morning, I talk I wake up and I do a ton of reading. Like even when I used to sell cars, like people don't know when you sell cars, like there's a, we do our meetings. <laughs> And then we hit our people up and they're alive, a gap. So usually in the morning, I used to, we do our meet, uh, our meeting, long wait period. I read, I do a lot of reading. You know what I mean? In yeah. between. Things haven't really changed. I read when I'm doing cardio a lot of times where I'm listening to audio books. Yeah. One, one of my favorite things is hitting the bag in the morning. That, now I got a heavy bag. That's something I've been doing a lot recently. But re, that's something I always do. It's, it's a habit. I don't know when I started it. I wake up, it's, it, I'll be in the bed. I'll like, all right, let's see what, what's, what article catches my attention. Then. Because mm-hmm. the time zone different, Elena hit me up and she's like, All right, what, what you want to talk about? I like, bam, I got a few, I got a few stories. Yeah, that's you. true. Yeah, because you're about an hour behind. So, like, when you wake up, everything has already started popping. I got the opposite problem where I'm up yeah. and ain't shit happened yet. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm simple so, time. So, yeah, I'm what am I yeah. supposed Yeah, I'm, I'm a real time. So, right now, I'm two hours ahead of you. Before I was three hours ahead. So, like, I was like, hold up. So, what am I like? I just gotta wait, motherfucker. What am I supposed to do until then? Like, I don't like. <laughs> and, and hotspot helps because people have no idea how many stories I used to drop. I was being CJ talk about all the time. We had these long ass streams, and we would still cut stories. So I was like, hotspot helped me squeeze all that stuff in between, like, and it helps yeah. me with my commentary as well because I'm forced to like do a lot of research on on topics that I usually wouldn't read as much into. Like, I one thing I've been talking about a lot is Africa. I've been trying to catch up on Africa because people like Mari Kimberly and uh, 
the Jawa Baraka, the Black Alliance piece, the, the, that whole crew really motivates me. And yeah, there, there's a big. Bro, I love talking yeah. about Africa. I love, to, and it's yeah. crazy. What I learned because of Hotspot was like that topic is actually much more popular than yeah, what it is in general. Like, bro, my some of my most viral videos from Hotspot have been about Africa. Like, and they were, and they almost didn't want me. Not gonna say they didn't want me to, but they were like, "Oh well, are you sure?" And shout out to Elena, our assistant producer. She actually kind of went over somebody's head and was like, "Yo, we are gonna talk about this shit anyway." And we, did. <laughs> and that shit got like hundred fifty thousand views in a day. <laughs> so yeah, nah, it's a, uh, it's dope, bro. I like the, I love the format. Um, once again, what I love also, like, just I'm a, it's a humble brag for me and Nick and the Hotspot team, like. It, uh, after we started doing Hotspot um, in this very unique format for, for Twitter, uh, like other people tried to start doing it. Yeah, so I like, noticed that. <laughs> they might get like one or two videos off and then they're like, shit, man, I got, yeah, it's hard to do some shit like this yeah, every yeah, day. Yeah, you realize I was working it. it's a lot of work, man. But go ahead. Bro, yeah, it, it, y'all think the three minutes ain't, bro, that three minutes is work, dog. Like that three minutes. So these long streams are easier. <laughs> it's easier to do long streams. Because <laughs> you got to, cram as much information, but also like you're trying to cram information in, but get to the point, but also help them understand the implications of the information you're giving them, which is very difficult you to do. You gotta make it interesting too. You can't Yeah, just... and you gotta make it, mm-hmm, yep. And for me, for the most part, I gotta do it every day. So it's a, uh, but like, it's a challenge really. Like it, for me, it was kind of like, I enjoy it. almost revitalized me because it, it was a challenge. I'm like, shit, I gotta do this every damn day for two or three minutes. For somebody who likes doing long stream, uh, uh, long form podcasts, it wasn't like super easy at first. It was like, yeah. we were trying to find a sweet spot. I'm like, cause they wanted 30 seconds. I'm like, I'm not doing 30 seconds. I, for what I do, <laughs> I'm not doing 30 seconds because I really, I'm a firm believer in context. I don't, I don't really like shock value over context. Like I like shock value with context. Yeah. So, and then we, uh, you know, we play with some stuff and got it down about two to three minutes and like, okay, shit. And every now and then we'll go over three minutes. But if we went over three minutes, just know that's just a banger. If we went over yeah. three minutes, just yeah. know you you got hit with some like the one that I got Greg today. Greg be putting work, don't he? That Greg, that yeah, guy, hey, Greg, you yeah, video. Greg be going crazy. Shout Greg out to Greg, our, our editor. Uh, yeah. Also, just as a little sneak tip uh, for today, guys. Shout out to JB. He showed me and Sabby uh, some shit last night that kind of like was made us take a do a double take. Um, basically, I'm doing a video today breaking down the fact that uh, Germany, excuse me, Nazi Germany, Hitler specifically worked with the Zionist organization in Germany uh, the same year as the Holocaust, 1933, to put them in Palestine before the Holocaust started and before World War II started. Bruh. I can't yeah. wait till the last spot come out. Yeah, that shit's crazy, bro. It's Holy and I couldn't shit. even do the whole thing, bro. I had to. I actually got to do a part two on Monday because the shit gets deeper. It's like that, dog. But yeah, the moral of the story is it looked like that shit was being set up from the jump. Like there was they used World War II as the excuse, but ironically, the I same Zionists who benefited, you know, in a lot was uh and in, in participated in Israel being what it became after World War II, they were insulated from the Holocaust because they worked with Hitler before. And because they and they knew it was coming. So they Bro. knew it was coming. They let the Jewish no people idea. out the out the dry as long as they were protected. Yeah, bro. Bro, Fuck people have no idea. Because guys, I'm a I'm a big stu student and fan of history. I'm not saying expert, I'm a student and fan of history. And as someone who read a lot of history, one thing you know is that the people that are living in that time period, period they don't know the shit that we know right now. Yep. So y'all understand, World War II, it was not that long ago. The motherfuckers alive right now that was alive yep. during World War II. In the, in, the, in the context of history, that's nothing, fam. So what I'm thinking about right now is what will people say about 200, 300 years from now when they have way more information that we have? Yeah. I mean, and, or or it's just being the basic information is being taught in school. Like, for example, you when in the video, you'll in you'll hear about it. I talk about the fact that it was the, the Zionists at the time, the Zionist experts at the time referred to it as Palestine. They referred to over and over and over again. It would they were it was called a the it's called the Havra deal. And they referred to it as the British Mandate of Palestine. So even though it was still under Britain, they were still calling it Palestine. Yeah. When I was at the Kansas City Palestine, uh, one, when I was at one of the marches, they had a ton of speeches at the end. And I did my job as a citizen journalist. And I posted this video 
from this 92 year old Palestinian. And I really wish I got the whole thing. I got oh, wow. maybe a few minutes we played on on the channel. I may I may play it again on the show again because it was a while. And I really wish I had the whole speech. I, if we had a better, I have a better, better setup. I probably would have. I got like maybe five minutes. You can search it on my Twitter. I, I, I could probably find this into some of you guys. It's a great video. It's a 90 year old Palestinian, and he explained how he lived under Israeli apartheid his entire life, and he explained how the state of Palestine was before the Nakba. So you know how what the Zionists lie about today? They're like, oh, there never was a Palestine. He's like, bro, I got yeah, a Pal Palestine ID, bro. Yeah. And that's why they, why you guys never think you never hear from these seniors, these elders, these people who can tell stories about pre Nakba Palestine. And he's like, these people that said there's no Palestine, it's absurd. I had all yeah. these ideas, there's all these documentation, there's so much evidence. And and I'm I'm not even doing his speech justice because remember, it was like a 12 minute speech, like all together. Mm -hmm. He went through in great detail, like the history of his life, how he know he like debunked Zionist lies. It, he's a guy you will never see on CNN or anything like that. He's a yeah, 19 year old. Cause it gets too deep. It's like, oh yeah. shit, I didn't realize how fucked this shit was. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like it, it's, bro. And once again, that's just the 1933. There's actually something else called the Belfort Agreement that happened in 1917 at the behest of Lord Rothschild. Like that was actually the first major transference of Zionists into Palestine. Still called Palestine, by the way. So what, the craziest part about the, 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 the 1933 situation is kind of similar to the 1917 situation, which is that in order for all of this to take place, Hitler made that deal, but it had to go through Great Britain. In other words, as Hitler was ramping up to do the Holocaust and start World War II, and they were making this big transference from, uh, from Zionists, 53,000 at that point, from Germany to Palestine, Great Britain had to approve it, which means they knew what was going on. And yet they allowed it to happen and then play fucking stupid when everything went down. Like, oh shit, I can't believe the Blitzkrieg happened. I can't believe the Holocaust happened. Oh. Like, bro, yeah, that shit's crazy, dog. It's like, oh, this seems like this was like a, this wasn't like a retribution. This was a plan. Yeah. This is, y'all had already given the land away and to justify it in the eyes of the rest of the world, you use World War II and the Holocaust, but you had already given the fucking land away. Why you guys think people like uh, Dr. Norman, Norman Fickelstein have been studying this issue for decades? Like, it's crazy how, like, I, I think I'm decently well-versed on this, but I'm still scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, cause, well, I say this because I'm always learning new stuff. <laughs> like I've read so right. much about this, still learning new stuff about this damn issue. I have Palestinian Community Network and other experts on. They'll tell me shit like, "Damn, I know about this. it's never ending." It's in one day. Propaganda, there's gonna be a, bro. Yeah, there's gonna be a catalog of all the crimes of Zionists. I don't know what we're gonna see in our lifetime. Eventually, when uh, when the Zionist project is ended, once the chapter mm -hmm. in in human history is written, this shit's gonna be recorded, bro. Like we don't, yeah. and, and this is why my point I made earlier. We really don't fucking know. The same way they didn't know about uh, what the uh, Nazis were doing to Jews in the forties, and many things as well. Like me, people didn't know what uh, the United States did to the Native Americans. I, I'll give you another example because they was always focused on on World War Two for good reason. But there's other tragedies. Like there's a lot of people who don't know what's going on in the Congo right now. That's what I was reading about uh, as well. A lot of people don't mm -hmm. know what's going on. Bro, in that. Congo, like, people don't the know, this current crazy. snapshot that we're in right now. And I know this because I'm once again I'm a fan of history. It's something that like the, the overall story is what the current populace don't actually understand. That's why we need citizen journalists. That what got me interested in this because I'm like, what do we don't know? Yeah. What do we don't know? Bro, anyway, Nick, I I'll give you last one. We got we no, I was just story. saying I was covering the Congo about three years ago, like before I moved to Brazil, like three, three, I mean shit. Bro, I, it was before I even had Dreads. I'm gonna put it like that. I was covering the Congo. I remember and, short hair, Nico. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, and I was like telling people like, "Yo, this is a big deal. I don't know why not a lot of people are talking about this. Like, this is a problem." And the, and France was ramping up to send troops in there, and what they were doing. So you know how they do when they discover resources. What they do is they create a a, a reason for the military to go in for you know in any given force, France, United States, whoever, using NATO powers, and they create like this this barrier to protect that resource, claiming that they're protecting it from, um, from terrorists. And that's what basically was happening back then. And it's because they had discovered a bunch of shit, oil, 
uh, uh, lithium, uh, cobalt, all that stuff. And obviously, this was very, you know, it's at the onset of the, the fourth industrial revolution. So all the military personnel and power had already been placed there to protect the resources for the West, but they used the terrorists as the excuse to, uh, to, to, to put the military there. Like it, it's crazy the stuff that we don't, and it's, you know, I don't blame everybody because like the reality situation is like, bro, we don't have enough time in the day. That's one thing that I struggle with all the time. Now I'm like, yeah. shit, bro. There's so much shit going on. I'm inundated with information. I do not have enough time in the day to do thorough enough research and tell everybody every story around the world, which is why it's also so important for us to do so many shows like this where we have other people on that are specialists in those particular uh, areas, Absolutely. right? So that's, and it's good. So it's, and it's also, it's also really good that we've seen so much crossover lately. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's not really been as much crossover uh, when I started as much as there is right now. Yeah, there was a, there was just more vicious capitalists fighting for competition. Cause remember, the, I think the left been fake for a very long time, and I and that included me. I made a lot of mistakes, you know what I mean. So it before the the quote unquote independent media space was people competing for MSNBC contracts. Yeah, that was considered the left. So if you're competing for an MSNBC contract, you're not gonna invite each other on. What it's is not even goal? like hyperbole. It's literally people complete, competing for MSNBC. Yeah, we, we're on the same name. You guys know what the fuck we're talking about. We don't <laughs> have the fucking same names. But mm -hmm. now you guys see that our goal is to educate the proletariat, educate the working class and our neighbors. That's why we created the hotspot video. That's why I'm like, man, I'm like, we'll bring Q Anthony Ali on. He know way more about Africa than I do. He's a mm -hmm. fucking legitimate historian. When I talk yep. about Julian Assange, I bring Misty on because she's an expert at Julian Assange. What, like, this, we just have Mark Kimberly, our uh, uh, John Brocker, our dear elders, who we deeply respect at RBN. That is what we do. This this figmentated left, this figmentated dumb left that's been cultivated by the people we're talking about, the professional managerial class left, the majority yeah. part of our teeth. That dumb cultivated level, they's like, oh, it's just vibes. We don't study, you know, they don't study, don't read theory, don't study history. We need to reject that. I, I talk about this on the show, and, and I give Nico like a lot of flowers for this because he's been. Uh, someone who done a lot of research taught me a lot of stuff about foreign policy, history, and that kind of stuff. We need a smart left independent media out, uh, not even yeah. not even just media, but a smart left wing movement. And I've seen the left in the United States; it is dumb, and that includes who who I used to be. You know what I mean? And when I talk to other people, other leftists around the world, when I talk to other uh, people who actually had successful revolutions, when I even talk to just general European leftists, the United States left is a joke. So our, yeah. our goal is to try to in, in, improve the state of the left. I want to stress education, research, community. And I think that's what we are on the path of doing. But Nico, I'll give you last word. And I'll read a few super chats. That, get that, bro, that's 100% true. That's why the left get duped. That, you know, that used to piss me off, Nick, back in the day. Like, I, it, it was weird because I had assumed, because it was this correlation that clearly needs to be, that research, whoever fucking made that research needs to re- because they said there's a correlation, correlation with being leftist and being educated, right? Then I realized that just meant literally you just have a certificate. Because it doesn't mean there's a correlation with being leftist or being smart. Because I found out the hard way that the yep. left, at least the so-called left at the time, was full of fucking idiots. They were full of dumbasses. And I was, I was at one point being punished for not being dumb. And yeah, I realized I, that over time. I was like, hold up, am I being punished because I'm not a fucking idiot? Like what? I the still hell remember you, you. I still remember you, Fiorella. You guys would get a ton of heat for saying U.S. elections are rigged. <laughs> like, bro, can you? I, like what? I, can you my, that? I was always was on right your side on that day. Like I was just a watcher, observer back then. Like you guys are mad because they are saying that the election was rigged from Bernie. Now think about this. You had people on the left that was upset because Nico and Fiorella was saying that the election was rigged against Bernie. For example, how does that make sense? The same shit that Elizabeth Warren admitted to. The same shit yeah. that Bernie went on a whole tour with Eric Perez to, to, because Eric Perez admitted to it. And they're like, how would, why would you, I, what people say, I don't know about the election being rigged against Bernie. I don't know if I'll buy that. What the fuck you mean you don't buy it? They told you what happened. <laughs> they, they told you what happened. What are you talking about? Like, yeah, Nico but, been fam. It was, consistent. it was a, it was a wild ride. Like I didn't, cause I'm, t I gave, I was naive, man. I was like, I was giving people the benefit of the doubt. Like, I know that the left isn't as stupid as they're pretending to be. And then you see who then you see who was elevated, right? You see Jank, who's a fucking a Neanderthal. You see Sam Cedar, who's a Neanderthal and is just as dumb, if not dumber, and is also boring as shit. Uh, you see people like Destiny even, the Wikipedia wizard. Like, you got 
all these people who are being elevated to the top. And I'm like, I thought the left like smart people. Am I missing right. something? That, and, Nico, that's exactly why I got into this. I'm like, bro, what's the fuck? All these dumb people on YouTube. That's me. We talk about it all the time. That's exactly why me and CJ got into it. Now, we're not saying we're the holder than now. We're saying we're better than these morons, like most of you yeah, guys are. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But wait, Nico, bro, last word. Yeah, that's, that's basically like I, I didn't even think about it like that at the time. I'm just like, I realized at one point, I'm like, Yo, like at one point on uh, in, the, in this particular space, I was the most qualified person to talk about any of these issues, like by resume, by profession, by experience, uh, by understanding of what's going on. Like I was the most qualified person on YouTube. And then I'm like, I got to a point where I realized I was being punished for it because they're like, hold up, you're actually qualified to do this shit. We ain't trying to deal with your ass. Uh-uh. We want to go listen to Jank and Anna. We want to listen to Anna Bass, Jill Stein for being a leftist, even though, like, like hold on, I thought you agreed with everything she talked about. Well, like, thank you, fuck? Bass, and the condemned Jew and Assange, which she yeah. did. Yeah, like, the bar was so low that Jimmy, who, like, is a sub of me, like, I'm just a jack-off comedian. Like, that's basically what Jimmy is. Jimmy's like, I'm just going to do the most basic level of research. And he took off for just having yeah. the most... You know, he had the exposure at the time, but like, and he used it to his advantage. But that's my point, is, like, Jimmy isn't even an, wasn't even an expert in any of this shit and was able to take off by being kind of smart. Like, just by being kind of smart, he took off. So, like, now we're seeing a, a, a intelligence being rewarded, which is how it should be. There, no, don't get it twisted. There are some spaces. We're not going to say any names here. But there are some spaces where there's, like, this faux intellectual movement going on. Like, they, they read theory and then twist it in, in you know, t to their advantage and take advantage of, uh, it's like, I, I mean, I call them Kendrick fans. It's like Kendrick Lamar fans. Like, fake, fake, smart niggas love Kendrick Lamar, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like that. It's like the fake, smart motherfuckers will love people who claim to be leftists. And it's like, because those fake, smart people are, are purposely, or, or they're acknowledging it and they don't care, but they're purposely ignoring the inconsistency in logic. For me, I know if you're smart by consistency in your logic or lack thereof over the course of an extended period of time. I can't tell if you're really smart in one video or two videos or even six months. It, it's like, okay, after I've seen about two years of content, I know that's like a long time, but I'm not sh bullshitting. Like it, it takes a minute for me to figure out, like if you're actually smart and you yeah. make a couple of mistakes every now and then, or if you play smart and you just happen to be getting it right because you watch the right people, you know, the, you know the wave that's going on, you know what's expected of you to say, or you're a contrarian and that's been working for you. But then when you actually get put on the spot about something, about like, what's your logic? Well, oh, no, 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 well, this person said this. and this. No, 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 what's your logic? Why do you believe that? And then watch people crumble, watch people fall, this, like Ben that Shapiro. Was, <laughs> that's why I'm uh, adversarial to these people now. Like I used to be like on the fence, like, all right, let's see if we can bring some of these people here. No, I'm adversarial because I think they're not this dumb. You know what I mean? Because with the Ukraine war, voting for Biden, bro, me and Nico got so much shit. It was me, Nico, and Rome. We was three black brothers on Twitter, X, and on social media that was screaming from the top of our love, do not vote for Jim Crow Joe. You guys know how much enemies we made by simply doing that? And these yeah. dumb motherfuckers didn't listen to us, and now we got a genocide? Yeah, and so now they over here like, what? We didn't say that. We never criticized y'all. Ben Burgess then disappeared. Uh, y'all remember that debate? I debated Ben Burgess. Like, I couldn't believe that he had the audacity to want to debate me about whether or not we should vote for Joe Biden. I'm like, you really want to have this debate? Like, after I, I smoked him the first debate that we had. I saw that. And I'm like, yeah. hold up, you really want to debate this? I'm like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, and he how couldn't, he, re he basically refused, he couldn't, what's crazy is if you go back and watch the debate, he like agrees with almost everything I say. And his conclusion is, but Trump is worse. <laughs> like, that's mm. just like Nico, that, that was like when I debated Robbie Swab from the Hill, and I debated Destiny. Oh, yeah. The last two times, after that, everyone was like, bro, stop, guys, don't invite this nigga on no more. Yeah, that yeah, was no, 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 too smart. <laughs> yep, we lucky that Sabby keep getting invited on. I, you know, luckily her and Bree are so close. But, but nah, like they are not gonna have, bro. I was supposed to go on the hill and they canceled like, like last oh, of minute. Course. Of course they, they did. can't. They can't like they producer over like jumped over somebody. I was like, nope, can't have him. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. Like why not? Why not? <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything crazy. Like it really, and it was about maybe about election integrity. Oh, oh, oh! I know what it was. So you remember, it was, Crystal was a big Bernie fan, right? They wanted to have me on to discuss the the flaws in Bernie's Medicare for All plan, which was still like basically it was still entrenched in the Social Security Act, which is extremely problematic because I was one of the only people with medical health. Like one, uh, I, I've worked in health insurance before, and two, I've actually written legislation for healthcare. 
So like, they were like, oh no, hell no. We're not about to have this smart ass nigga come in here and make Crystal look like a fucking dumb ass while she's running her sh Like They weren't gonna do it. They weren't gonna allow it, which is like, cool, whatever. But that just let me know like, damn bro, like, okay. So I, I actually do get, I get punished for being smart. That's the opposite of what I thought was supposed to happen. I thought you were supposed to get rewarded for being an expert. It's like, yeah, but yeah, you can be can. an expert and it, as long as it's convenient for their narrative, but don't be an expert and expect somebody like and be against somebody and expect like that there's a reason destiny keeps getting brought on for these fucking conversations every single time right like oh you had so many people that was tagging me and Piers morgan like i was racial i racial Piers a few times so he know who i am i like i know i would say rachel like thousand plus like oh yeah saw that shit you did you know I mean? and then i saw like a lot of people like why won't you have nick on to debate Piers never responds like, and then yeah. I had a, my my clip with Destiny because I posted a clip when Destiny was viral strategically <laughs> of me debating Destiny. And the people were like, why why won't Pierce? And I know there's a lot of people talking about why won't Pierce bring Nick on? These motherfuckers are like, oh, we don't know who this yeah. is. They try to pretend they don't know us because we yeah. get shit right. I went, I was on the hill, I debated Robbie, and I fucking dismantled him in 10 yeah. minutes. We were talking about authoritarianism, Venezuela, and communism. Then I debated Destiny about uh uh, uh Russia versus the United States, fascism versus uh, capitalism. Now the thesis are debate. He lasted 20 minutes before he started agreeing with me. Then he did a thing that Ben Burgess did too. He started agreeing with me like, oh, fuck, I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. hang with this nigga. So Green then cutting you off show, and, and, and my trying show, to hurl personal insults. That's what they, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah remember, at, remember at the, the Destiny show, he's like, hey man, I make sure I bring you on for future conversations. Hey fam, did that happen? <laughs> this motherfucker, like, let's get this motherfucker out the show real quick. But anyway. Bro, Destiny, the conference I used to go to, Better Discourse, Destiny got so upset at the way I fucking dismantled him that he told them that he would stop streaming their conference to his channel if they invited uh, me back again. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, because he got fucking embarrassed in front of everybody. And it, it wasn't the first time because the year before, he they he thought he was going to slide because uh, it was like him versus like two or three conservatives. Oh, no, two conservatives and a liberal. The liberal dropped out. So guess who showed up in their place? Fiorella. Uh. And he got embarrassed again. And he was not expecting it. And like to the point where the conservatives of the convention, the liberals and the lefts were all like, yo, who the fuck is she? Like she's ripping this man. Everybody, there was a lot of people waiting to talk to Fiorella about how she destroyed fucking destiny after that debate. So he was like, yeah, no more of that shit. Nah, that, but that's what happens, bro. Like they don't want they no, they don't want smoke for real. They don't want smoke for real. Like, yeah, it's cool. I get it. Especially, I especially with hospital, it's only a matter of time before we become way too big to ignore, you know what I mean? But they can keep trying to ignore this elephant in the room. Like, they, God, you, bro, I they know who we are. The, bro, they do know who we I've been, bro, you have no idea how many DMs I received from like big ass pages where um, they'll watch, cause like we'll have like a few hotspot videos go viral. The bigger pages will see it, but they just won't acknowledge it. But they, what they'll do is they'll follow hotspot. Yeah, I have, I have, a, I have a, a tip from a really reliable source that told us that Reuters have us on the ban list, or being on, on the ban list. And I really? also remember, I was, I was at the Palestinian rally at Kansas City covering it, and there was this NPR guy. He was actually a great guy, this black guy. We talked for a bit, he was just doing his job at NPR. He like, hey, you that social MMA guy on Twitter, right? Like, oh shit. Guys, no one recognized me, guys. No, like, I'm not that famous yet. Like, in, in my ordinary life, people don't recognize me. The only people who recognize me are politics people. So like the NPR yeah. people, me and the reason I say that is evidence that the people in the know know who I am. You know, what I mean, I'm far from being recognizable, but the people in politics know. But they like do this thing where they look at us while they try to pretend they're not looking at us. Anyway, let's yeah. move on. We got, okay. we got a few things we're gonna cover. I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you got a son uh, waiting for you as well. So there are a few topics I just want to quickly get through. Uh, maybe 75 minutes. I'm gonna try to get this. We can wrap up this stream. I just got. I definitely want to cover the Trump story, and I'm gonna quickly cover this because this is a follow up of uh, your hotspot and the ongoing coverage of the aid worker being killed by Israel. And this was, I should say, Israel fucked up here because now Israel is taking pressure to like they have never seen before. I've been a corporate media hawk over the last year or two. I have never seen them run as many negative Israel uh, stories as I have over the last two days. Now, I feel some kind of way about this. I feel some kind of way about this because it's good but think about it like this. We had 40,000 dead Palestinians. The hospital system in Gaza completely destroyed. Children being sniped by the IDF. You have young, uh, men aged at least 15 that are being kidnapped because they're assumed that all men are agents of Hamas. 
So they were kidnapping Palestinian men and sending them to concentration camps in Israel mm -hmm. right now. Are people upset about that? No, they're upset because some Europeans died and Americans died. And I don't want people to understand, misunderstand me. It's a tragedy. It's horrible mm -hmm. that they died. But you guys see how this kind of stuff bothers me? People don't, people never give a fuck about what Israel does until they kill others, anyone else. And I feel like mm -hmm. I'm the only one who's saying this. Over the last few days, other me and my pro and, and made a few handful of others. Everyone talking about, oh my God, it's a tragedy that Israel killed the aid workers. Yes, it is, but it's also a tragedy that they killed Palestinian children. Mm -hmm. Why did Israel to murder a Amer an American aid worker? Why did it take for them to murder United Central Kitchen for people to care? That's so true, bro. That is fucking. That's I didn't even think about it like that. That's but bothering me. I was kind of surprised that there wasn't more outrage, honestly, because I'm like, hold up, there was Americans involved in this shit. It was. It, that's what. Like, whenever Kirby was like, you know, it could have been an accident. Like, you know, we, you know, we, we. There's no proof. I'm like, bro, an American was killed. So, but you know, they gotta say it's an accident because any other time, we. Do you remember what happened whenever those American soldiers were killed? And it was like we about to pop yeah. off everything. We about to go to war. We about to do this. We about to do that. And it's like, okay, well, this innocent civilian volunteer was killed. Yeah, but maybe it wasn't on accident. Maybe it was an accident, guys. Maybe it was a fucking accident. No, it wasn't an accident. Like, they shot three missiles in case the first one didn't land right. Like, but you're right. That's crazy. I never thought about it like that, but you're right. If that was a child, if, those were, if that was a car full of innocent Palestinian children, that shit would have been in the news cycle for all of 30 minutes. They would just say that if 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 it was Palestinians, they would just say there was a mosque. The media would just say it. They were like, no, there was probably a mosque. We believe Israel. And now they're being questioned because Americans died, because white mm -hmm. Europeans died. Once again, we can have two thoughts at the same time, my friends. That's a tragedy. It's a and it's a good thing that this led to increased awareness. That's thought number one. Two thoughts at once. Thought number two. Why the fuck is Palestinians being dehumanized to the point where forty thousand plus of them? Die and it doesn't lead to this reaction. Well, hell, even last week was the last week wherever uh, the Palestinians that were trying to get like pick up the food that had landed were getting sniped down, like cold blooded men, women, and children. It's like, well, that's probably a bigger deal, honestly, because they're like desperate for their lives. They have no choice but to be in that situation. They're just trying to survive, and you know, it's sad what happened. It was a tragedy, but like those are volunteers. They chose to be there. Um, knowing the risks, uh, does, it, you know, it's still sad, but like they had a choice. Uh, and these these Palestinian Palestinian women and children that are just trying to eat food did not have a choice. And like it's like we either go run out there knowing the risks or we don't eat. Like there are moms and dads, principally moms, because the dads are fighting. Probably there are moms out there running to pick up food because they know like we don't get food right now. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to get food to my kids. Getting gunned the fuck down. And that didn't make the news for more than a day. If that, I don't remember it being a thing for that long, unfortunately. And I'm not even sure if the news, the mainstream media covered it like that. So yeah, no, you're hundred percent right, bro. Last thing I want to say before I can play the video. Once again, good thing, bad thing, two thoughts at once. I've seen right wingers that are, that said, I, I wish I say the tweets. I, I remember this tweet clearly. So just take my word for it. Well, I saw this tweet where it's like, yo, if they're killing these aid workers like this, imagine what they're doing to the Palestinians. Now, that's a fucking shit great that we don't see here. It drives me crazy, but I'm once again, I'm trying to stay positive because a part of me, it drives me crazy because why didn't you think about this before? But I'm like, Nick, come on, don't be an asshole. Take the win. <laughs> Nick, don't be an nah. asshole. Take the win. So I'll take the win. I'm like, all right, so I'm glad people finally get it now. You know I why? See it's because you already right had that thought and you thought it was obvious. Probably, because yeah. that's I've had that thought before, like, Damn, bro, like if it, I'm pretty sure I've even said it on my show, like, yo, if they're doing this yeah. shit to these people in broad daylight that are protected by organ. Oh, yeah, I said, like, if they're doing, I've said it wasn't about them, it was about journalists. I'm like, yo, if they're doing this to journalists and they know it's gonna get reported, they're doing this to like the, the top heads of Al Jazeera and they don't give a fuck. So imagine what they're doing when the cameras are off. Yeah. Like, their yeah, shit happened. Bro, their shit happening. I mean, we don't, they're raping their own women. Yeah. I'm gonna just put it like that. Yeah, I covered that. How the IDF was just like the United States military. They have they, their rape culture is so strong they can't stop 
each other from raping each other in the military. It's a giant problem in IDF. But let's get to this, this video. Let's get, when, when, it's always fun doing live with Nico. We can riff all day, my brother. But let's let's try to get through some of these topics. I'll play a little bit of the video. I'm going to cut this. We only going to play maybe 90 seconds. I don't have to play that much of it. I was about to play the whole thing, but it's really not that important. I'm going to just show you guys just how MSNBC is talking about this. And I found it. You gotta remember. You gotta think. You gotta have two thoughts at once here, because when you see this coverage, it's still not really good, <laughs> because they still like <laughs> they stuff that annoys me. But the other thought is they say stuff I never ever heard them say on corporate media before. You know what I mean? Mm. The, the so let's listen to this. Feel free to interrupt anytime you have Nico. I have a few points I want to interrupt, so feel free if you want to anytime. Let's, let's get to it. And we begin with the breaking news: the IDF releasing the results of its investigation into that deadly airstrike that killed seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen in Gaza. The report calling it a grave mistake and detailing how the IDF, quote, mistakenly assumed Hamas gunmen were inside the world. If you believe that, you're among the dumbest people alive at this point. If, if you, you believe, believe that. Hey, if you believe that means you don't believe the IDF, because the IDF was very clear. They knew that there was no gunman inside. They, yeah. And it was not men. It was one man, and he was left behind at the warehouse. So, And they knew that. They, it, the report said that, and that was a report from the IDF, said there was one gunman. Oh, by the way, Fiorella just got back from the West Bank. She was talking about the capability of those drones that fly over before they, you know, kill innocent people. That he, She said those drones have such good clarity in their cameras that they can see the, the name brand on your fucking shirt. That's what she said. Like, they knew who was in those vehicles, bro. Yeah. They knew who was in the vehicles. And yeah. they were like, yeah, whatever. Big shout out to friend of the show, Dana Fairbanks. Israel eval evaluating themselves is like the police investigating the police. It's absurd at face value. And you're going to hear something said here. You're never going to hear on corporate media. And I want you to think about this as we continue. Look at what look at what MSNBC is covering. Once again, there's going to be a lot of good and a lot of bad here. You never see coverage from corporate media demanding investigation into Israeli actions. Facts. You guys see how MSNBC is like, oh, we need to see what's happened here. Why don't they say that about the hospitals that Israel raid? Why don't they say that about all the children that was sniped? You guys see how I think about this story? So there have been a Palestinian that was sniped out hospitals. Why are, Why is there not a segment on MSNBC like, we need to look into this into this uh, in, uh, this allegation that they're sniping children? Do you guys have a, a, have a, a explanation for that? They never do that. No. Whenever there's mass crimes against humanity, they just take whatever Israel says at face value. But now they kill Europeans. No, nah, nigga, we need to invest. We need to. Uh, now you see, you see, you're I, killing I, I, white people. Well, that's where we draw the line, buddy. That's where we draw yeah. the fucking line. I kind, I kind of buried the lead a little bit, so let me let the video play. I kind of, I kind of spoiling it. Brave mistake and detailing how the IDF quote mistakenly assumed Hamas gunmen were inside the World Central Kitchen vehicles. Israel also saying two high-ranking members of the IDF have now been dismissed from their posts and three others formally reprimanded. World Central Kitchen responding to... Oh, they found, they found the people who are the scapegoats because yes. this is a systemic uh, policy to target aid workers, but now those IDF members are fucked, probably. Maybe I'll not. I'll do that. I believe Maybe it was, not, yeah. it was uh, oh, probably if they were yeah. high ranking, they're they're going to retire. Yeah, I can being see that. dismissed from your post is not the same thing as being forcibly removed from the military by way of like a court martial. Okay, for that's fair enough. That's fair yeah, enough. Yeah, no, nah, you know how that, bro. I've been telling you, I was military, bro. I was, I was yeah, a the point I'm making in dismissed, general is you're yeah. right. It's a scapegoat. Bull, it's escape. Why yeah. don't we know their names? Fucking put their names out there, bro. Yeah, that's a good. You're you're 100 right, Nico. The point I was making is that they. This is what military does all the time. You have people in the United States commit war crimes. Let's go after this person. No, these war crimes are, are systemic, motherfucker. But anyway, let's, let's, let's move on. Not, not too big. Let's continue. To this report saying it's a start, but not enough, and demanding an independent investigation right away. So, Joining yes, us now is... They, they would never talk about this shit on M MSNBC. On any other story, they would say, uh, Israel it's denies true. that they went after the Palestinians. They claim it was a mosque. They will move on. You guys see how they now pushing the independent investigation nonsense? We just play a little bit more of this and then we move on. I'll just play a little bit more. Megan Fitzgerald, NBC's Ali Ratha at the White House, and Joel Rubin, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State in the Obama administration. Let's start with Megan now. Uh, Megan, just walk us through this report. 
Yeah, so Anna, the IDF starts by saying their forces first identified a gunman on one of the aid trucks and then identified an additional gunman. Now, after the vehicles left mm. the warehouse where the aid had been unloaded, one of the commanders mistakenly assumed that Hamas operatives were in the vehicles and that they didn't know, in fact, it was World Central Kitchen staff. <laughs> uh, the IDF is calling it a grave mistake stemming from a serious failure. We are seen her. Now, hold up real quick. Hey, Nick, when dismissed. she says the report, whose report? <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely curious because that's not what the initial report said. The initial report from the IDF was like, nah, there was only one guy. They're adding because, so the reason that there's this mysterious extra gunman uh, appeared out of nowhere in this new report from, and this is probably the IDF's in, or Israel's independent report, is because you figure out how fucking ridiculous it is. Because Heretz was the one who reported. The Israeli news source was like, yeah, there was one gunman. He wasn't even in the car. He wasn't even with him. And if they had, if, if this is Israel drones, Israeli drones, so they knew that he wasn't in the car and they let off them shots anyway, right? And also the probably the most crazy thing is like these motherfuckers called them and was like, yo, man, can y'all stop bombing us? And they were like, Beep. oh shit, our bad, we pressed it again. <laughs> our, our bad, oh, fuck, damn. You're uh, breaking up. Oh, you're dead, just kidding. Like that's basically what happened. And the, it's like y'all had, so y'all had contact information to verify if there was Hamas members with them. Y'all had y'all had visuals to confirm the brand of the WCK on the vehicles, but the most important thing is y'all pre-approved the route and said it was safe, which means there was an open dialogue between the two. They pre Israel approved of that route, which we know they wouldn't be allowed to just be driving around there doing whatever the hell they wanted to without Israel pre-approving the route, and they pre-approved the goddamn route, act like they couldn't pick up the phone to send a text message and just let off. Three fucking rockets. And what's crazy is they've only actually said, at least in this particular uh, report, that maybe there was one other gunman. There was one, but you blew up three cars. And also, if you 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 also had to know that this they're saying now, once this, this report, Israel's independent report, is saying, oh no, nah, man, they didn't even know that was uh the WCK, except for y'all already admitted y'all knew. And also, uh <laughs> That was a security, the security force responsible for blowing them up was also security force that was responsible for approving the fucking route in advance. Yeah, uh, bro. It's, it's crazy. That oh, whole situation is fucking think, insane. And the Zionist actually runs the organization. He was super pro-Israel. <laughs> so that probably is what the fuck is, what's, what's really making everything go crazy. Cause like, he's like, y'all mother, you disloyal fool ass bitches. That's probably what he's thinking. Cause it's a Zionist that runs the organization. Uh, and now he got all this blowback. And now we know, like, when it comes to nonprofits, there's some money involved. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. There is a little, every dollar that's raised, whoever's at the top is taking a little bit off the top. How much you think he lost by 240 tons of food being turned back around to Cyprus? After doing all that, paying all that labor to organize that food. You don't think he pissed a little bit? Probably. Especially everybody who was involved. Uh, man, you guys really thought that you guys can get anything past this hot spot, hot spot duo? Like, this <laughs> hot spot crew, you guys are not getting anything past us. <laughs> nah, nah. Probably nah. getting the slam. So I'm going to play Delirious just a little bit more and then we can move on. Uh, just, for, just so I'm not clickbaiting the audience, I'm going to cover the Trump uh, uh, criticizing Israel story. And then I'm going to cover how RBN was vindicated once again. I told you, motherfuckers, the United States wasn't defeating <laughs> Yemen. Yeah, People thought I was crazy. Yeah. I was I was very loud and vocal. In fact, I made literally like two hotspots where I said the United States is destined to lose. So I want to do those two stories. Let me know how you do on, on time, Nico. We've got those two. We good. Stories. We got time. I got about 30 minutes. All right, cool. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to play a little bit more of that, and then we can do those last two stories uh, for today. Anyway, let's let's move on. Feel free to interrupt if you have anything else. I'm going to go back for context a little bit. In fact, it was World Central Kitchen staff. Uh, the IDF is calling it a grave mistake, stemming from a serious failure. 
They're also taking action. We're told that they dismissed two high-ranking commanders on the ground and reprimanded others. Uh, the IDF also says this shouldn't have happened, and they'll be making sure that it doesn't happen again. Now, just moments ago, Secretary Blinken said that the U.S. will be fully assessing the IDF's report sure. and said they're not just looking to see what steps that are being taken, uh, but the results of those steps. Uh, as you mentioned, World Touch Motherfucker, Petition Motherfucker, we is saw the results of the morning. steps that were they taken. They a statement uh. saying it's clear clear from the preliminary investigation that the IDF has deployed deadly force without regard to its own protocols. Chain this is something else you'll never see. We can wrap up with the same after they finish this thought here. You will never see them cite a report that contradicts what Idril say. Like, I, I've seen yeah. so much of these statements. It's the small stuff it's like this. You will never see them contradict them like this. But I'll just let them finish the thought and we can move on. Man's and rules of engagement. A deadly force without regard to its own protocols, chain of commands, and rules of engagement. Uh, it went on to say that they're demanding an independent investigation. But look, you know, there's no doubt about it. International condemnation just continues to grow with Israel's staunchest allies denouncing their actions. Uh, and of course, public opinion on the way Israel is carrying out Red. this war on a, a just continues to drastically shift around the world. <laughs> well, Nick, as long as the Israel staunchest allies are denouncing their actions, then I guess we're all good. You know, it, like, uh, but how much fucking effort did it take for you to denounce killing seven volunteers uh, that were just delivering food? I'm just just curious. Know, also, really quick before you move on to that topic. Go ahead, Nick, go ahead, go ahead. So uh, on my show last week, I actually said as good as it is, as far as a, a PR victory that the United Nations Security Council uh, pass that resolution that there needs to be a ceasefire for the month of Ramadan. I was very clear, like, yeah, but like, I don't want y'all to under, I, I need y'all to understand, practically speaking, that, do, that don't mean shit unless they pass the resolution immediately after explaining how they're going to punish Israel if they yeah. don't follow the ceasefire. Yeah, I say, yeah. otherwise, that ceasefire ain't going to last one fucking day, and the Security Council is going to look the other way and pretend like they didn't just pass this shit last week. Last week, y'all. This shit, Ramadan is happening right now. That motherfucker, that's toilet tissue they just wrote that resolution on, y'all. That's toilet tissue. Actually, yep. no, because at least toilet tissue has a fucking purpose. So it ain't even toilet tissue. I don't know what you want to call it, but it ain't even that. Because at least toilet tissue has a purpose. Like, uh, that's where we're at, bro. Like, it's, what the uh, fuck is the point of the United Nations? What is the point it of it? Exposed. It been exposed. It been exposed at the All these motherfuckers getting exposed, bro. All of them. Yeah, they all getting exposed. They all getting exposed. Is Idril lost the PR war in a way that we have never seen before? Like I, I reported on a poll where fifty eight percent of white evangelical Christians supported a ceasefire. Like, do you guys know how fucking crazy that is for for Idril to lose their most reliable uh, voting base? Here's another one. I just, and I just without question, the dumbest demographic in the United States. By far, not even close. By far, <laughs> and they still like you. Y'all tripping over there? Y'all tripping? <laughs> <laughs> tripping. <laughs> so Israel is completely in shambles, and now there's this new trend because of this, where people like Alex Jones, they are being cowards because they are doing this thing where they say, "Oh my God, Israel, you're committing horrible PR for yourself. Yeah, you're you're committing right. PR suicide." And people are like, oh my god, I'm so glad Alex Jones is speaking up against intro. That is coward shit. That's a, like he's making a, a an astute that? observation about the facts of the matter. As it, he, they're losing the PR war. Yeah, there's a bunch of quantitative oh, data how, that shows. How brave! That. What the fuck? How, how brave how, of you for, for saying something that everyone knows? So how, how brave of you for reporting headlines that are obvious and verbatim? Will be exactly what you said. And that's what a lot of people are doing because they're they feeling this pressure because people are turning against Idril. So they got to do this thing like. Oh, yeah, man, I think Israel fucking up because they fucking up PR. You guys heard that, right? Why should we give a fuck about their PR? You guys understand they are saying that instead of morally condemning them. Mm -hmm. The same thing that progressive groups are doing. Bernie Sanders and the entire progressive left, they're saying stuff like this. Biden, you need to change your policy. You need to change it around for us to vote for you again. Nah, you don't get to... Nah, fuck that noise. Like, bro, you don't get to just erase 30,000 lives off your hands, bro. You don't get to... He, he, that shit's done. Even if he had a chance, from at least that may be, once again, I'm logical and I'm consistent. But like, if my person I knew uh, was willingly and openly 
supplying crack to kids in the street for, for a year. And then two weeks later, he's like, hey, man, I turn over a new leaf. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to start a business. You think you can help me out? Spread the word. Nigga, no, you were just some <laughs> crack to kids. You can kiss my ass. That's motherfucker, what the? I can't just ignore a, a, a year worth just because you just decided today you want to start a business. That's really convenient that you want to stop selling crack to kids the moment you decide to start a business and make money. Yeah, and need, need a network. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. I'm greedy, man. I'm a greedy propagandist for the working class. I'm a greedy propagandist for anti imperialism. I want it all. I didn't think we, were, we would ever defeat Israel and the propaganda war at, at this extent so fast. But now we got to the point where people are like, man, Israel fucking up. Now I want it all, bro. You're not. You're not winning me over until you actually say you morally condemn what Israel's doing. This thing but to be are, fair, Nick, we didn't, we're not really winning the propaganda war. They're just kind of beating the fuck out of themselves. Like, that's just a beating good, the that's shit a good out of themselves. Well. Yeah. I guess it's like the Ben Shapiro clip. Ain't nobody cooked Ben better than Ben cooked Ben. Like, uh, it's, that's Israel, right? Nobody cooks Israel yeah. more than Israel cooks Israel. They're just like, yeah, man. So uh, we didn't know. What? Y'all are supposed to be the, y'all have the best intelligence in all the Middle East. And y'all ain't got enough intelligence about what's going on in your own fucking war in your own state with your own drones and, and in a route that you pre-approved? Yeah, man, we didn't, we didn't know, man. Our, our bad. Come on, bro. They don't even... Kid, that shit... Oh, bro, the excuse... The gaslighting, bro. I just... It makes yeah. me so mad from a visceral, intrinsic, like, place. Like, the gaslighting. I can't stand gaslighting. And Israel is just the king gaslighting. They're king guys. They, like the, they are the fucking worst, bro. Like, just, yeah. this is just to wrap it up quickly. They're just the fucking ahead, worst. Anyway, you guys see young evangelical support for Israel plummets. And I found this uh when I was doing my research for when I saw the evangelical poll. Like, this has to be an outlier, right? Now I keep seeing all these the new poll numbers. Now, so the boomers, a lot of them, their mind has been gone. <laughs> not even for they just going through the motion. They went into they in point. the grave. They just going through the motion. They're not changing yeah, like, their mind. Now, like, hopefully, I don't live to see World War Three. That's where they at with it, bro. And I'm not. And guys, I know some of you guys get fucking pissed at me. I'm not shitting on all of you guys. You guys know who I'm talking about. There are people. There are boomers who like I ain't learning anything. And that shit started from 1980. A lot of these motherfuckers haven't learned anything new since the Reagan era. If I'm not and talking about you, I'm to. not talking about you. But you know who I'm talking about. But the but, reason I bring that up because young evangelicals. They're like, hold up. What is this cuck shit we doing here? Because <laughs> I said before, and I will say it over and over again, the main driver of Zionism is the biggest cuck shit i ever seen in my life. It's Christian cuck Zionism shit. is the most beta cuck-like ideology of all time. You It Christian. makes sense why what? Destiny is like so firmly in a Zionist position, right? Like he can sympathize yeah. with the U.S. being Israel's bitch and letting Israel fuck the world in front of him. Right, because that's what he did with his wife before she left him. Right, he just watched other men fuck his wife, and that's that, that's a true story. I'm not. That's not hyperbole. That's really what happens. Uh, that's really what really happened. I'm not even joking. So people, like, it took me he, to realize that was a real story. I thought people were just talking shit. And I thought it was too. <laughs> I thought people were just memeing and trolling him. Now, like, wait, wait, that's that was a real story. But anyway, go ahead. Nah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, it used to be these people. There's there's a a, a pattern of consistency to the, their, their disposition. Like, they're like, oh, I can relate to this. I'm going to defend it with all my heart and soul because I know what it means to be a fucking cuck and, 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 <laughs> and to be thrown to the cast to the side. Because that's what now. Israel's doing right now to the U.S. At first, you thought you would, like, because well, the cuck is usually the one that pays the money, uh -huh. right? He sets everything up. He thinks he has control of the situation. It's like the control from a distance until you realize, oh, shit, dick controls all and your ass ain't really ever had control. You just thought you had control because somebody used your money and, and, and then fucked your wife and now you don't got a wife. And that's why you, you know, rage tweeting all day now. Cause Destiny didn't use to tweet like that. Destiny used to tweet like that, bro. He used to tweet every now and then, like, and then like go stream and stream and stream. Now he's like constantly defending himself and super defensive. And he's like John Kirby right now, just saying dumb shit on Twitter all day. Like that's, so that's why Sabby, it's Sabby a relatability a factor, Nick. Bro, Savvy did a video on him and he was like, you want to come on my show? And we're like, bro, you think Savvy is above you. I'm the kind of motherfucker that'll come on your show and talk shit. You think you, Savvy is much Savvy. above you, sir. You think Savvy going to waste time on you, bro? Savvy's but, demeanor would, would embarrass Destiny. Like, yeah. she would just be like, what the fuck is you doing? Like, why are, we, why are you talking to me like this? Like, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he got that shit mastered, yo. She was like, all right, Destiny. Anyway. <laughs> But someone prove me wrong, because this is this has been a thought I had for years and years. Christian Zionists are people who accept the premise 
of Zionists that they were God chosen people. You're supposed to be a Christian, sir. And then with this belief of accepting their premise that they're God chosen people, not you. So you decide to take your taxpayer money and send it to Israel so they can have a safe space because you believe they're God chosen people. And what do they do with our taxpayer money? They spend health care on their people. They spend education on their people. Israel is the fifth happiest country in the world, according to their bullshit happiness index. But let's go by it. So the Israel is extremely happy. We pay for their health care, their education. And you do so because you set their premise that they're God chosen people. And meanwhile, you say to us with a straight face that we don't deserve health care and education. But you believe that your taxpayer money should go and pay for health care and education for someone with a different religion than you. What's the more cuck energy, man? Big cuck energy, bro. He was so right. Someone please explain to me what what more ideology is more cuck like than this? Like literally the most beta. I tell you guys, I have some some toxic masculinity too. Sometimes that is the most cuck beta like shit. I never understood it. Never understood it. I can't relate, bro. I can't relate. You know, hey man, I'm gonna tell you some shit that's gonna really fuck you up. So in my research about this uh, uh, Havra agreement, I found out. So the I, I can't remember his name right now. I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna find it in a second. But the guy who was responsible for the Zionist movement in Germany. Um, so he used to identify with Marx. However, he decided to separate from Marx because he wanted it, he wanted socialism to be more Jewish focused. And specifically, he wanted the Jews to adopt a socialist state that was more nationalistic towards Jewish benefits. So in other words, and this guy is the one responsible for brokering the deal with Hitler that transplanted those uh, uh, those Zionists and also resulted in Hitler giving them $100 million to boost their economy, which is, yeah, that's a whole different thing. Uh, and then they used, he, his, this dude is literally famous for this shit. Everything happening in Israel is actually what happens when socialism is allowed to thrive. And it's because this guy is a social, the guy who brokered this deal to make sure Israel became what it became today is a socialist. And that was the, his goal the entire time. He said Marxist socialism was too broad. He wanted one that's focused on and on, on Jewish yeah. people and Zionists specifically. And Israel is the result. And look at how fucking happy they are. That's so crazy, right? Isn't uh, that crazy? I'm going to oh find his name for just, you. Just like, just like Kwame Torres say, socialism doesn't, doesn't fail us. People fail socialism. That's a fantastic Kwame Torres. That's a disgusting thing <laughs> what that guy did. Yeah. But you guys see how they implement uh, just basic social democracy and improve happiness the same way that uh sweden norway and all them do but you have uh young evangelical christians who just now realizing how much cuck shit this actually is <laughs> that you guys have the ideology that we don't deserve health care in yeah. general but you yeah, guys yeah. pay for the health care of another country we can't afford health care i'm too busy paying for Israel. i can't pay for theirs and mine's <laughs> Once again, That's I'm ridiculous. asking you to be wrong. What's more cut? Explain to me a more cut like ideology than that. Politically, not not a single damn thing. But anyway, I need to move on. I'm just having fun at this point. So I'm this is the reason I brought this up. Because Trump is not heroic. Like it's weird that when people paint him as Trump is just the smartest among the ruling class. I know that's weird to hear, right? Because he's a dumbass, but he's the smartest among the ruling class. So but it's like what we said, what, what we said before. You you can't be too smart now. You can't be too smart. And be part of yeah. the class. That's like it's it's an unspoken agreement, guys. <laughs> so Trump sees the fact that people are being upset with, with Israel. He's been seeing that there's a little bit of resistance on the right. So now that is what leading Trump to say this stuff. I'm, and I always frame it that way first, because people need to understand that's the main driver. It's the people. <laughs> the people will drive the people to take these positions. So now Trump is doing a very tepid. Very weak uh, criticism of Israel. I have. Hey Nick, uh, I don't want to interrupt, but can I tell you his name? I gotta okay, tell you his name. It's Haim H A I M Arlo Sorov. Arlo Sorov. A R L S O R O F F. I'm gonna put that shit in the chat because y'all need to look this dude up, bro. He was at the epicenter of all that shit that happened in right before the Holocaust popped off. He's at the epicenter of like why Israel is the way, and he got assassinated by extremists, um, by extremist Israelis who say he wasn't basically taking it far enough with the Zionism. But like, I mean, shit, bro, like you broke the deal with Hitler. How much farther you want to take it? He, he, oh, before that, oh, the day he broke that deal, he got killed in Tel, Tel Aviv, like a few hours later. Like, yeah, we got what we needed out of you. Appreciate it. Peace.
Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Trump's Israel criticism breaks with GOP, sows uncertainty. So now this is just Trump saying the basic common sense thing. Like, hey, how about not showing you guys kill so many people? <laughs> and I have a hotspot video coming on this very soon uh, oh, that's the that I had a lot of fun with. Because Trump's criticism of Israel is very tepid and weak. But he's the only one in the GOP that realized that you got to say something on this. He, he also so doesn't really give a fuck about what the GOP got to say about what he says about it. He's also that guy, right? Like, they're like, oh. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Absolutely. Now He's causing division. Point, Nigga, y'all already divided on him. Y'all suck Y'all suck his dick because you have to, not because you want to. Like, uh, is that news to anybody? He going to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, he can do that. Which, and also, people have to remember, too, he lost people like Candace Owens. That was a big L for him. I think Kenneth is is tacitly supporting him again, but all those people who have been common sense on Trump, they like, you know, we might vote for you, but we ain't walking that campaign for you no more. We're not, because now you look like another one of them. Like, Bro, can you imagine if RK Jr. wasn't a cook on Israel? How many Trump people he could have stole? Bro. But anyway, look, you guys see, this is this show right here why Trump is such a great politician. Look at what he says here. I'm going to play the video over here. But Trump says Israel has to get war in Gaza over fast and warns it's losing the PR war. And he also said something of, of a few days ago where he said, Netanyahu has to finish the war. And I said this in my hotspot video. Trump is very smart because he realized that people who want to like Trump can interpret it however they want. Exactly. <laughs> he is so good. Like, he is so good. No Energy. normal politician would do that because if you like Trump and you're against the guys of war, you can be like, hey, look, Trump is calling for a ceasefire. If you're pro Idro, you can be like, look, Trump said you got fit the damn job. You gotta, gotta win. You gotta win this thing. I had to point yep. that out because that shows how Trump is just so much better than them. I don't like Trump. Obviously, but that's hey, such a good politician move. But hey, but Nick, remember, so we had this conversation, and remember, people were saying, "Well, if, if Trump is worse than Biden on the situation," we said, "No, no, no, no," because Biden is predictable. Trump is yeah. not, and his yeah. ego supersedes anything that Netanyahu wants, anything Zionist wants, and anything Israel wants. And what he's telling Israel right now, and specifically in Benjamin Netanyahu, is. You're losing the PR war. And you know, if there's one thing for certain, two things for sure when it comes to Donald Trump, if you're losing the PR war, you lost Donald Trump. He don't give a fuck yeah. about none of that other shit. He don't give a fuck <laughs> about none of that other though. shit. All that Zionist, chosen people, he he like, if if it was like, if it was would have pulled badly for them to move the embassy to Jerusalem, he wouldn't have done it. Right? Like, yeah. we know that. But it, he and right now, he damn sure wouldn't do it. So what he's telling you is. We all know that at this point, it is all but certain I'm going to be the president of the United States, Net Netanyahu, BB, uh, Milikowski, excuse me. Uh, and the PR war is is necessary if you want my support. It let, you really, you really on, on the fence anyway with everybody. But if you want me to, do the, to be a part yeah. of this, the PR war is necessary and you're losing it. So whenever I get in office, don't act brand new if I don't answer your phone call. That's all I'm telling you. That's all I'm telling you. It, 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 that's Trump. That, and we told y'all this. Whenever people were asking, we and Nick had this conversation a month or so ago. We told y'all Trump is unpredictable because he only makes yeah, decisions that. based off of his ego. Yep. And that's why Putin said he prefers Biden. <laughs> because Putin yeah, because he's predictable he's shit. Like, yeah, he didn't say that. And people thought he was trolling. But he, and, when I, and my first reaction when I tweeted about like, oh, Putin is a good troll. Then I thought about it. I was like, hey, actually, that doesn't make sense. Because they're going to have mostly the same foreign policy. But at least Biden doesn't have that crazy unpredictable factor. And that's literally what Putin said. He said, I, I prefer Putin because uh, I prefer Biden because he's more predictable. Anyway, but I want to show you guys the video of Trump saying this. Because I, I actually thought the video was more fascinating than when I read it. I, I saw the video shortly before preparing this stream. You guys know I found it for our homie, the hotspot. <laughs> Always doing great work. So I found the video because of them. And the way he says it is, is even more interesting. So let's listen to the video. A little tougher to talk to them. But October 7th would have never happened. They never, ever would have been attacked. But it is what it is. And this horrible thing happened. And what I said very plainly is get it over with and let's get back to peace and stop killing people. You guys see how people can think about that in multiple ways? Like if you're a Trump supporter, don't like the war. You're a Trump supporter who like the war. You can interpret that to be pro-Trump either way. That's why Trump shits on DC politicians. They don't understand. I don't like the guy, but as a commentator, I can 
explain neutral in a neutral way. This guy is way better than the swamp monsters in DC yeah. who can only win because they got uh, a ton of money. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Nah. Go ahead. I've I've, I'm a, like, I've been a speech coach, like campaign coach, like media type stuff. Like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, that motherfucker. See, this this is what we try to tell you. He, like, he knows what he's doing, bro. Like, and he is more dangerous now because now it looks like he did that shit where it's like his followers that are and some of his biggest followers, by the way, his most influential followers. Now in their minds, I just influenced Trump to yep. end this war in, in to, you, you yeah. and, and now they're behind him even more. Cause now they yep. feel like they have influence over him. And it might, and to some extent, actually, it might be true. What, what did you say, Nick? His most toxic trait and his best trait is that he leans into his base too much, yeah. to some to some degree. Like he'll just go wherever wherever he thinks his base wants him to be to, wants it to be taken. He'll go there. So like it, bro. It's 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 genius move, bro. And like, who can criticize? Like you gonna say, oh man, stop stop uh, asking for people to stop being killed? Like you can't criticize that. <laughs> Get back to peace. Like you don't criticize yeah. that. Yeah, and he's avoiding the Iran issue, which is interesting. I like that's a, that's an important thing that he, like he's going out of his way to ignore. Actually, yeah, not I think that he actually it's, condemned it. Not, not you mentioned it. Not, now that I mentioned that he hasn't said anything about that. Hold yeah, up. I, at the most, I think that he might have said like they shouldn't have bombed them like that. I think that's the most that he says like for when they bombed them in Syria that they shouldn't have bombed. But like yeah, other than that, he hasn't made a decision like oh we're gonna back Israel if they go to war with Iran, which you would expect him to say. If he is the Zionist that everybody is hoping he is, uh, and I don't think that he is. I think that Trump is once again he's just a savvy. Now, I just looked. I don't see any statement. I don't see any statement from. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And there's just, a reason because he, he already told him. he he said everything without he ain't say Netanyahu's name, but he said everything without tell telling him directly. You're losing the PR war, buddy. You know what that means if I win. Let <laughs> you, know. you know what that means. I'm gonna leave it Maybe. there. Anyway, let's continue. Got once again, you guys see why I find the video version way more interesting. But let's continue. Ever would have been attacked, but it is what it is, and this horrible thing happened. And what I said very plainly is, get it over with, and let's get back to peace and stop killing people. And that's a very simple statement: get it over with. They got to finish what they finish. They have to get he it just done. Pat himself on the back. Get that's a very simple with, statement. And get, get it over, over with, with fast. <laughs> Dude, it's a still very simple statement. I'm so good at this. Anyway, yeah, that's what I said. Get it over with. I'm so confused by Duopolis in general, guys. But one thing that always confused me how people listen to Trump and they think he's a leader. <laughs> that's always something that always been weird to me. Anyway, let's let's continue. <laughs> what they finish, they have to get it done. Get it over with, and get it over with fast, because we have to. You have to get back to normalcy and peace. The whole world is blowing up with this. Normalcy. Idiot president we have. He's an idiot. But you are still standing 100% with Israel. You you achieved the Abraham Accords, which was the first peace deal since right. Sadat. And so are you still 100% with Israel? And what's your advice to Netanyahu? Beyond, get it over with in a hurry. Well, that's all the advice you can give. I mean, that's the advice. You got to get it over with. And you have to get back to normalcy. <laughs> Uh, but he, he gonna trick so many dummies. No, 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 keep, he, I gotta hear it. I gotta hear the end. I gotta hear the end. Right, I like, I like, my bad, my bad, my I bad. I wanna hear that bad. part. My bad. Over with, and you have to get back to normalcy. And I'm not sure that I'm loving the way they're doing it because you gotta have victory. You have to have a victory. And it's taking a, a long time. And the other thing is, I hate they put out tapes all the time. Every night they're releasing tapes. Hold up, pause that, Nick. Yeah, I just want to make sure I won't crazy. He said, yeah. yeah. so are you still 100% behind Israel? He said, well, look, <laughs> the best advice <laughs> I can give you is get over with quickly. And I'm not loving this. I'm not. <laughs> he ain't got. He's telling you what's going He's like, no, basically, nah. I ain't going to say no, but. You know, it's some loser shit right here, bro. I don't fuck with this loser shit, bro. You guys are losing people. You know, I'm down for killing Palestinians and shit, but you guys are losing people. Wow, that's fucking crazy. And he said, Literally. I don't like the way Israel is doing it. So as you got John Kirby and the Biden administration, they're just being full gaslighting morons. Like, you got Biden, that Trump that's going to say this, he's going to win a lot of dummies over. A lot of dummies that, because on for the record, I don't believe Trump is going to change shit. I don't think he's going to change that much regarding this. But he know what to say to win the election. Nah, this is exactly it, but he, he so... The way that Trump would change the outcome, maybe not necessarily with Palestine, I don't think that he'll change that outcome, 
but it will affect the outcome of uh, Israel and Iran. Because if Israel, did, I believe that Iran, if they do decide to go balls to the wall with Israel, it'll be between the most important months of our election, right? Yeah. Basically, because because what it's going to do is going to force Biden and Trump to engage directly on that issue because of how big it is. I mean, shit, you know, uh, petroleum just tripled today because of the situation with Israel and Iran. So yeah. it's going to make them make. Are you going to back Iran? Are you going to are you going to back Israel? Uh, are you going to stand out? And there's going to be decisions made. And you you know what Trump's going to say? Trump's going to say, uh, "I'm not about to get get the U.S. involved in somebody else's war." Y'all attacked them motherfuckers. We didn't attack them. That's in more or less words. That's what Trump is going to say. And it's going to force Biden. Dude, that'll, be, that'll be glorious. I really hope that happens. Man. Yeah. And it will force <laughs> really Biden that. potentially to take the same position or he'll do what he tends to do, which is go the opposite direction. We have to back Israel no matter what, which is a death sentence right now. But that they don't give a fuck about death sentences. They'll say that shit anyway, which will end up with Trump in power. And I actually believe Trump genuinely feels that way. He doesn't like losing. Why would I go help you in a losing war that you started? Yeah, I, I can see that. We see. Like, see it's that. just fucking, it's logic. He he made it very clear in that statement. Like, nah, y'all losing, bro. Y'all got to get some Ws. We haven't I had a W it. against Iran. We tried that with Iraq. Remember when we sent Iraq to go to war with Iran and we helped them out a little bit and Iraq got their asses handed to them. We don't know enough about Iran. We do not know shit, actually. The reason that people think that Iran has to use proxies because they don't have the 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 military personnel and the um, the weapons to handle their own business. No, why would I? I am preparing, because this is something that both Russia and Iran have in common. I'm preparing for the long game. And the long game is against uh, the United States and NATO and whoever else from the West wants to try to step up. So why would I then reveal all of my cards yeah. when you don't even know how? Bro, We, I promise you all, y'all, we do not know how big Iran is. We do not know how big Iran is. Yeah. Because they even have designated flight patterns for commercial airlines and military, like if you go out, if you you try to little deter off the beaten path, you're gonna get shot the fuck down. I, I don't, we don't I, know how big Iran is. We kind of know how big the military is, but we don't know how capable they are. But we know they're so organized. Their military is so organized. They're fighting other people's war. And you don't hear a goddamn thing about them being overstretched. Bro, Nico, we got to eventually like talk about this more in detail. Because I've been going to war with these military people, having fun on Twitter with these people explaining how... Uh, uh, these people, the United States military is not as strong as people they think they are. They don't win They're wars. Not. They got their ass kicked in Vietnam. I don't, I'm trying to prevent myself going to rank because I easily could. Because I, I explained before how they got their ass be in Vietnam. People got this really cartoonish Hollywood like uh, thought pattern how war operates. Yes, Europeans are, and Americans are great at war over here. Europeans yeah. are good at war at Europe. That's what we learned in Vietnam when they had yes. to fight the wars. So what what do you think is gonna happen when they got to fight in Iran and the mountain ranges and the unique area in in the unique land and structure? We don't have the conditions to simulate. Fam, I don't have the conditions to simulate. They're gonna get their ass beat. But Nick, I give you last talk because I, I I'm literally holding back my tongue so much for a second nah, time. I, I was, was just saying, like, like I, 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 for those of you who don't know, I'm a veteran, right? I was part of a yeah. military intelligence battalion, the uh, the 138 um 138 cavalry in uh Fort Bragg. We were military, we were a military brigade, then a military intelligence brigade, and then it got involved to a battlefield surveillance brigade. But <clears throat> I'm gonna just put it like this, y'all. Take that dumb motherfucker who was in our <laughs> class, like that used to wear uh etnies and vans and like rocker shirts and blue jeans, but they weren't any particular cut, they were just blue jeans, and like was just super anti-social, probably hated women. Um, did okay in school, but wasn't really that smart, had no social skills. Yeah, so he's a command sergeant major somewhere in the military. <laughs> making decisions on about what to do. Uh, making decisions on what to do in some cases, or not in a position to question decisions of somebody else, regardless of how stupid they fucking sound, because he's an idiot. He's an idiot who played the game, because after you make E6, E7 and up, it's straight political. You have to kiss ass to become... That's why you see when they get to higher ranks, most black uh, most black military personnel are they switch to conservative because you got to be in with that circle. And if you're a liberal or a leftist, you can't get promoted past E6. Literally, they won't, it won't happen, bro. So basically, you take the dumbest, that dumb motherfucker who you know, like went to the Marines, went to the military. Like everybody knows that. Everybody been to high school. Like, yeah, he's a sergeant major somewhere right now. He's a, he, or in some cases, he's an officer because 
He went to the dumbest uh, college you could think of, but he went, um, he, he joined ROTC. Now he's an officer, probably about to make fucking light colonel somewhere running a battalion of people. <laughs> think about that. And I'm, that's not hyperbole, bro. Yeah, it is not. Is. Everybody, it's like that feeling you get when you work it, like with adults for the first time, right? Now I'm not talking about like McDonald's or something like that. It's like when you, I, when I worked at Best Buy for the first time, I was 18, 17 turned 18 years old, right? And like, it's mostly adults because most of the departments in Best Buy, you got to be 18 or older. But most of those people have been there for almost a decade. And I, I'm listening to everybody. I'm talking to everybody. I'm really, I'm really quick. Like, young motherfuckers are like a bunch of high schoolers. I thought this was supposed to be different. It's the same exact yeah, shit, I, but y'all just getting paid. Y'all on the clock with y'all bullshit. That's only bro, that military propaganda only worked when I was growing up. When I became a adult, like, oh, these are children. And uh, and I know all you guys know on X, but the people who have been on X, you guys had to see my threads over the last few days. Why I've been calling out the U.S. military, been calling out them out as wheat. I had a tweet that had one million impressions because I called out the U.S. military. I had a yeah. ton of see that. I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna do a segment because it's X drama. Because I, you know my rant, I did many of these rants before telling you guys how the U.S. military and how strong as you guys think it is. I essentially did a Twitter thread version of the rant you guys heard. A lot of veterans didn't take it well. They even got the community uh, notes to to put a bullshit fact check on the fact that I said the United States military never won the war. So they put a fact check on my tweet that was so, that was so clown-like that I mocked it, and then they had was forced to remove they it. Were, they were t- <laughs> I've had Bro, that happen to me, too. people were clowning them because... I don't want to go the whole, over the full story, but I was, they were like, oh no, the United States military actually do win wars. So then I'm like, all right, I'm going to fact check the fact check. Got all these people in the military in shambles because I told them that you guys didn't win Vietnam. You guys didn't yeah. accomplish your objective in Korea. They said, Nico, the, the community knows before they was embarrassed and they deleted it, they said the United States won in Libya. How? By turning into a slave state? Bruh. What objective was accomplished in Libya? But anyway, yeah, I, they, and, and technically speaking, uh, remember, they were telling us that the, U- the U.S. wasn't on the ground in Libya. Yeah, and that so was a that. Commu- I think that's another reason why they were forced to delete. They like you know, say that, <laughs> right? Like what? Like come I, on, guys. No, nah, I'm just telling like, you a personal experience, bro. I mean, I grew up in in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Like, bro, I watched the dumbest motherfuckers from multiple classes. For, I mean, my fr- people that I know personally are E8s, E7s, and in one or two cases, they're colonels. And they're fucking idiots. They're dumbasses, bro. I'm like, and it ain't like, it ain't no smoke again. Like, they're not, what the, the thing is, a lot of them aren't even like genocidal. They're not idiots. They're not like, in a sense, like they're not uh, morally reprehensible people. It's just that they're cogs in a machine. And the only way you get promoted in the military is to be the best cog in the dirtiest machine. Right? Like, that's it. And what happens is, like, people like myself, where we had, I had an opportunity to go to West Point, right? Um, and you get to a point where you just realize, looking around like, yo, there's a lot of dumb motherfuckers here, bro. I don't know <laughs> if I want to really be a part of Team Dumbass. I just don't really want to be a part of this shit. And like the smart motherfuckers get out and they take everything they can from the military. They take, I got, boy, I promise you, I promise y'all every day of my life, I get way more out of them than what they got out of me. I got these motherfuckers. It's mine. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what you do if you're smart. You don't stay in work for what are what is effectively pennies. I mean, there are people in the military. I mean, that's how you know the motherfuckers is dumb, right? Because there are people in the military that are on food stamps. <laughs> and you went to the military for security, but you and your family are on food stamps. Oh my God, bro. Why yeah. are you still there? Don't get me started. <laughs> don't get me and started. And they got so many avenues, bro. If you get out and you do it right, you have, all you have to do is deploy once. If you deploy once, if you know what you're doing, you can guarantee retire with 100% disability, which means you can get a house for, for with damn near 0% interest. You can start a business with damn near 0% interest with a guaranteed business loan. You get your school paid for if you got out, as long as you did your three years. Then if you if you did, uh, if you're above 70%, you can get what's effectively another version of a DGI bill to do your graduate or master's or your or your PhD or a vocational, uh, a vocational certificate. You can literally make more money in school, bro. It, then what you would make if you were in the military as a junior enlisted or even a senior enlisted in some cases. And motherfuckers are so dumb and thinking, you know, ne- and thinking about next week or the week after that they get stuck. Or better yet, you can, don't even have to fucking go to school. You can get out the military and get a guaranteed GS job. And you that's would make why, more money. That's why it's so funny to me when people want me to feel bad for, like, you, 30 years like, oh, for what? Nick, why you so mean it's better? Like, bro, they are elevated to... Uh, they get benefits that we don't get, but we're not allowed to criticize them. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's crazy. I'm not, I'm not going to dive into you, you guys. Fuck it. Nick, the independent contractors who were ex-military spent most of their day laughing at the motherfuckers who E3, E4, who are doing the exact same job, except for you got to do this job. My job is to sit here and watch you do the shit and get paid 10 times what you get paid. To not yeah. have nobody over my neck, breathing down my neck about this shit. And I get to go where the fuck I want to after I get off work. Yo, ass about to go right back to your barracks to report to your sergeant. And if you want to leave the city, you got to get a whole goddamn day pass in order to do so. Like, it, it, the ones who are smart, they leave. They get out. So it's like, it, when you have a military that, that is so dumb that it literally is incentivizing people to leave, how can you possibly have the strongest military in the world? Yep. It's just like, so is, like I, I'm gonna get back to the Trump video. I'm gonna just literally just quickly touch on this because this is what I was talking about earlier. I, this is my, I already did this rant on RBN. I essentially just turned it into a Twitter thread. I, I was explaining why people, the United States military, not strong people think like when you study military history, like morale, like the reason why you fight, that is very important to win the war. You need you need willing and you need good troops. This is stuff like Napoleon knew. Now, this is like what Hannibal knew. If you look mm -hmm. at the greatest generals in history, they knew how important it was to have soldiers that have a reason to fight, to have morale. People, American generals, the reason why they lose every war, because they're like, oh, we can just throw any troop in there. Then they get their ass beat and they wonder what's going on. They, they draft yeah. people in Vietnam. They don't know why they fight in Vietnam. They get their ass beat and they wonder what, what the fuck's going on here. So this is a tweet I sent out that had one million impressions. That's how you know I got under their skin. <laughs> yep. Hey, what happened? They had 1.1 million earlier. They probably scrubbing numbers. I wouldn't be surprised. That's crazy. That. Remember, they try to community. Uh, I'm trying to do this really quickly, but you remember they tried to do the community notes on this because I explained how the United States military is not made up of war. I just read the tweet real quick. The United States military is not made up of warriors. The United States military is made up of children who simply want free college and all the benefits of joining the military that our society doesn't provide. Is that how you produce warriors? Having people that join the military because they want to go to college later, mm -hmm. or as warriors when you are a colonized people who fighting for the freedom and liberation of your people. Oh no, if you're if you're a part of Viet Cong, for example, and you fighting for the freedom and liberation of your people, you have more reason to fight than the person who was drafted have no reason why they're there. Yeah. If you're you're in the military because you want to go to college, then you in you in the military because you want to learn how to program. You trying to be All a fat combat commander. arms. You think you're gonna defeat someone who fighting for the liberation? But go ahead, go ahead, Nico. No, I was going to say all combat arms E5 and below are their low-paid mercs. They're, oh. they're low-paid merc mercenaries, and they're wondering why the U.S. can't win shit. Like, <laughs> so, like y'all can't even, like, y'all go to Iraq. Y'all being, what did, Kit, what did Cat Williams say? Like, show us the uniforms in Afghanistan and Iraq, especially Afghanistan. He's like, it's because we ain't killing soldiers, we killing them. He's like, y'all killing women, children, motherfuckers in, in flip-flops and a cowboy hat. That Those are the people that y'all are having trouble beating. <laughs> what? Um. Like, y'all, and what, like, I don't understand. We we can't win, we couldn't hold our Afghanistan. We, we couldn't hold Iraq, really. Like, we never really could hold Iraq. The reason that the terrorists got eliminated is because who got involved? Iran and Russia. Like, yep. that's why the terrorists, you know, they beat the terrorists that we sent there. Like, they, and they couldn't, we really couldn't uh, get Saddam out there without the opposition getting involved. But once that happened, we lost, like, all fucking hell broke loose in yep. Iraq. Really? Like, that's why they were so hesitant to leave there. So, like, it's, we, what have we won? I'm genuinely you know curious. What? We don't win. And bro, the, the amount of, I don't have time to go over it. We're not going to go over it. But the amount of cope in this thread was, I was literally having the time of my life with this shit. Ray showing these people left and right. This got a million uh, impressions. So I, let me continue. I said, this is not how you create warriors. You know, have people that just want to go to school and shit. This is why the United States lost every single war in the modern era. The United States military is a joke that can't win battles. All they do is commit mass atrocities. And, and Nico, you want to know what they kept saying? They're like, what do you mean we can't win war? Look what we did in Libya. Look at what no, we, we did all right. You, know, you mean oh, when you burn down villages? Libya. Do you know how long we were in Libya? Like, just from my knowledge, from personal experience, my uncle was deployed there before anybody knew we were there. Like, bro, since the early 90s, at least, late 80s, early 90s, it took us that long, and we still had to enlist the services of fucking radicals from Chad to do the job for us. Think about that. Yep. And and guys, the reason why I'm I'm literally making this thing I'm really focused on because I'm trying to save lives. Guys, 
You need to convince everyone in your family not to join the fucking military. If you don't, you are failing your job. I don't want to hear it. I'm, I know I'm an asshole. I acknowledge that. I don't want to hear you complain about your dead soldier family member if you don't heed my warning right now. They are ready to go to war with China and Iran and Russia, and you're going to have your family member sign up to the military? So I am speaking hard language right now. I am offending people right now because I'm trying to send you guys the message to get the fuck out so you don't mm-hmm. be that soldier with PTSD, homeless, and killing yourselves. Say your family life right the fuck now. So yes, I am the right now, bro. Because it's coming. I'm the hill. But go ahead, go ahead, Nico. Who who wanna like, bro? Save your like, save your family members' life. Like, I got. I everybody knows. Like, my biggest thing is I have to tell people in my friends or family that want to go. Like, they see my all the benefits. I'm like, yo, I was really lucky. I got very very lucky, and I was really smart. And I had, I literally had mentors that were like, yeah, we about to finesse the fuck out of this military. Like, and I was a paralegal on top of all of that, so I wouldn't even deal with any of the shit that most people would have to deal with. So it's hard telling people like, yeah, I know you want this, but don't fucking do it because you might not make it to this point, right? You really might not make it. We, we you really want to fucking die fighting Israel's war? Yeah. So look, you want to know who these people are? And I'm kind of bearing this. We we kind of roll into the Yemen segment. I think we covered Trump enough, so we'll just we roll into the Yemen because it actually fits really well. Um, I'm trying to prevent you guys from being like these brothers and sisters here. Mm-hmm. Why do we got brothers and sisters in Syria and Yemen? Yep. Or I, I'll just say Syria and Iraq. Why, why we got, black people why are we got brothers and sisters in there? the military? Why are black people overrepresented for our population in the U.S.? Why are black people overly represented, especially in the junior and the enlisted side? We are overrepresented um, proportionally to our population in the U.S. Why is that? Because it's a poverty draft. Yes. Most prominent black people. Do y'all know, like, if so? I, I lived in North Carolina for a long time, and, and the one consistent theme that you'll see all up and down the East Coast, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, especially Georgia and Maryland, um, is that the people who have risen to prominency and have accrued a lot of success and wealth, that it's because them or their grandparent was a part of the military at some point. Like, when my child is going to be successful, it is because my I was a part of the military. Right. And I grew up in a military town for the for the for the first half of my life or second half of my life, rather, because of my young adult life, because my dad was in the military and my dad decided to join the military because he saw the benefits that my grandpa inadvertently got because he was forced to go to Vietnam. Um, but he was serving in the Air Force. They saw the benefits that happened. And like my dad was like, that's a good idea. He decided to go to the military. Right. Like yeah. my cousin is very successful right now. His dad was was a sergeant major third group at one point. His dad, he's very sick. My cousin's very, he's part of Secret Service. Like, which he got, because his dad was in the fucking military. It didn't, bro, he was like a, he's like 24-year-old Secret Service, dog. He was, that's like, yeah. Because of who his dad was, so, but he, they're all black, is my point. It's like, so it's like ingrained in you at a very young age, if you grew up in that culture, that if you want to be successful and get, get secure as a black man that's guaranteed security, go into the military. But they don't tell you about all the stories that that aren't successful. They don't tell you about all the people that don't make it, all the people that get fucked over, that get scapegoated, right? They don't tell you that you gotta, if you wanna get promoted past a certain point, you gotta trade your values. Like they don't, like it's it's crazy to me, like, or, or the PTSD, there's that fucking part. Like my friend who, uh, he was in the Navy, just, he just joined the Navy because like, fuck it, I don't wanna go to college and I just want something to do. Didn't think it would be that crazy because he was in intelligence. And in he, the first year his daughter was born, he was in Libya, actually. And he couldn't hold his daughter when he first got back from deployment because of all the babies he had saw, seen killed. Couldn't hold his daughter, bro. For real. So that's so... Why, why, and this and me and Rome, I don't know if you saw the segment. We did this maybe a few weeks ago. We went hard on the parents of those black uh, soldiers who died. Because if you allow your your child to go out there and die in war, you fucked up more than any other parent ever fucked up before. Why will you, why will you allow them to go through that trauma? And even if they survive, they get PTSD. You want to know who you can kind of forgive? I guess the, the parents of the World War II soldiers, the parents of the Korean soldiers, because they didn't know that much about PTSD and shit. They didn't know yeah. that much about it. We know everything that United States soldiers go through in the year 2024, and you as a parent decide to send your child overseas, and then one of the black parents who send her child to die, then she didn't even know why she why they was there. Oh, I don't That's know what they're doing. They don't know what the, what do you mean you don't know why you send your child over there? That's so absurd. And this comment right here is why it's so crazy. And this is why I'm speaking out. We should not play any part of this. And absurd that we do. 
Now, just for a second, Tom will continue to thought on this on this, this tweet. This does roll into the Yemen story. We almost wrap up here because this actually does roll into the Yemen story perfectly. Could we talk about military else? Trust me, this transition is gonna be fire. So let me continue this this tweet. Cause this was I had when I was on my break, I had I had a blast trolling these fucking neocons on Twitter because I was fucking clapping them. They can't hang with me. So let's continue. I said, <laughs> United States military is a joke that can't win battles. All they do is commit mass atrocities. They couldn't even defeat the Taliban. They lost in Korea, lost in Vietnam, and haven't accomplished a significant military objective in years. And this is the question I keep asking people. What is a, a military objective in the United States that they had on paper that they accomplished? Don't worry, I'll wait. <laughs> Not one. Yeah. I mean, let's continue. This is why, and this is what, this, more than anything else, Nico, this is the line that really pissed the, the neocon and the NATO bots off because they sent the bots army after me after this. I said, this is why if there's a war between the United States versus China and Russia, we would get destroyed. Destroyed. And we would. Destroyed. The destroyed. people in the West who believe otherwise are delusional. Destroyed, bro. De bro, let me tell you something. You know what's so crazy about the Taliban situation? You telling me we couldn't beat the motherfuckers that we trained? <laughs> We couldn't beat the motherfuckers that we. That's funny as hell to put it like that. <laughs> we couldn't beat the motherfuckers that we trained people. It ain't like ISIS. ISIS like we don't beat. We can't beat ISIS because we don't want to be ISIS. Like that's different. Taliban. We trained them. Then they said, "Fuck y'all." Is basically what happened, and we had to give everything back. Like, Our bad, dog. We ain't really mean to to do that shit. Like IEDs. The 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 concept of IEDs. We they're improvised explosive devices. We taught them how to make them, and then they use them on us. And we can't win. Like, come on, bro. Why do we? How how dumb do you gotta fucking be to uh to just go out on random patrols in Iraq and Afghanistan? You're just going out, just going on my Humvee. Why? We're just gonna see if there's anybody out there. Well, don't you already have a perimeter set up? So why are you fuck you going ten miles out in the goddamn dark? When they know the terrain, they don't like you, and you can't see shit. <laughs> Wait for the motherfuckers to show themselves and handle your business. You got intel, you got satellites, you got planes. But we're, we, we got to look like we're doing something, Nick. So we're going to go on these fucking Humvees in the dark and just drive around. We're going to go joyriding. And they're like, oh, shit, we got hit by an IED. No fucking shit. <laughs> Y'all have done the same thing for 10 years. Go on random fucking patrols outside of the fob and get blown up. And then when people were like, damn, man, what were they doing? They were just driving around. They were just on patrol. Patrolling what? Did, did, they, did they get some intel that somebody was coming? Nah. Has there ever been a major attack on a fob in the existence of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars in 2001? No. No. Never. There's never been a major attack on a fob. In all of the war in Afghanistan and Iraq since 2001. Never, Nick. Why the fuck are we just out there <laughs> driving the fuck around? People have no idea what the fuck is going on in these wars. They watch G.I. Joe. They watch these propaganda movies. They see Bad Boy. They, they see the Marines with John Cena. They see these Hollywood yeah. propaganda movies. They think that's how war works. For real. Yeah. When I say America... They see Bad the Boy with no know. traffic in Miami. Pff, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, ain't no high speed chase in Miami. I can guarantee you that shit. Unless it happened at 4 a.m. God damn it. Like, that shit happened. People watch, people watch these military movies, these CIA movies and Hollywood, the Marine and all that shit. And they really think that how war works. It's no, so fucking no. crazy. They be, so, they, having, they be having people think that. They're like, oh, man, look at how look at how uh, stealth and like how high speed they are. And these motherfuckers. I'm like, nah, bro. The only time. The reason that Special Forces is so successful is because they're operating with intel that they know about. Because usually they're killing people that we put in power, which is how we got all the intel. Yep. That's why they're so successful and have such a high success rate. Like when they went, and I know one of the people responsible for killing Noriega. I know one of the people who were there when it happened. And I asked him, I was like, yo, like, well, how did y'all know he was there? Oh, well, the, you know, the villagers ratted him. I'm like, no, 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 no. How did y'all know he was in that village? Well, you know, we, we, we you know, our history. And like, so y'all, only reason y'all got Noriega is because y'all were the ones who put him in power and then y'all fucking killed him after? Well, well, yeah, why was it so important to kill Noriega dude. instead of prosecute him? Yeah, maybe because you didn't want him talking, and that y'all so y'all was just going as an execution squad basically to clean up somebody else's fucking mess with intel you already had. That doesn't make y'all special forces. It just makes y'all uh duh forces basically. 
Yep. And like that comment I'll just put up there said, that's a, probably the best example to put. People think Call of Duty is real life. Call of Duty, we know, is uh, uh, Pentagon CIA propaganda. That has been yes. exposed officially. They yes. get the script from the Pentagon. So people the video play Call of Duty. I, I used to play Call of Duty back in Modern Warfare days. You play Call of Duty, and you're like, nigga, this is a war. It's like, that was American thing. Now, Nick, I'm gonna show you this, and we are quickly. The, the Yemen story not gonna take too long. We almost done, Nico. Uh, this is the community note, guys. I own like three and zero versus community notes thus far. <laughs> Every That's single time, too. Elon and his fucking goons try to communi- uh, community note me, it always gets removed eventually because I am not one of those people who complain. Oh no, I lose my monetization on my tweet. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck so whenever I, the second I saw this community note, I'm like, oh lord. You guys are about to to expand this discourse even longer because you know how much discourse I created with that tweet with one million views. I couldn't even cover it, Nico. I couldn't even read everything. There was so much discourse. <laughs> with this. Then I saw this community note because that my tweet got so big. They put this community note. I was like, oh my god, oh my god. I was. I was and then I said this tweet like, yo, you guys see this shit? And Nico, I want you to respond to this if you want to because this is what they said in response to me. Saying that the United States can't win a war and we're not a country for warriors. They use Wikipedia as your source, by the way. <laughs> and said, uh, it must, Destiny must, it must have been Destiny. It must have been Destiny, yeah, Destiny right? Destiny, Destiny and their homies took over the community notes, apparently. <laughs> so, guys, this is such a big win for me. I don't know why they did this because they put this fucking community note on me, uh, on my tweet. Uh, let me know that I got under their, under their skin. <laughs> That's why they do this. So they say in the 21st century, the United States won its intervention in Northwest Pakistan. It's like, that's f- super fucking specific, but okay. The great and mean? almighty U.S. military and their victory in Northwest Pakistan. Not the whole state of Pakistan. Yeah, not the whole North- state, not the whole country. How do you intervene in a corner of a country? Like, you you can't, that ain't an intervention. Like, that's just y'all pop Dan said what's up and left. Like, it's not an intervention. There's not a, and for one, I say you guys don't win wars. That is not a war. That's why you use That's the not a war. Exactly. And then they said, we won Operation Ocean Shield. Nigga, that's, if, if I was to take it at face value, that's not a war, sir. It's an yeah. operation. And then they said, this is what I mentioned earlier. They had the audacity, and this is what most people clap in the community notes, because everyone was like, wait, what they say? They said the United States won both interventions in Libya. Quick question. If he won the first intervention, why is there a need for a second one? Yeah, facts. <laughs> so just at face value. <laughs> and Iraq. Is it 2013 to 2021? Nah. And secondly, I said, you guys do not win a war without committing mass atrocities. So this is well, just one of many examples of them saying, no, Nick, you're, you're wrong. We do commit mass atrocities and we win at the same time. And okay. <laughs> Good job, genius. <laughs> Maybe we'll disagree with you, but good job. Thank you for thank you for acknowledging that you guys are committing war crimes. And you guys, I can't read all the response because it's too it was too big. But there are so many military people like, do you think we lost in Iraq? Look what we did in Iraq. Like, you guys yeah, are bragging about killed a million people, people, people and, and, and left. Yes. What? Like, what the fuck? Anyway, I, like I, modestly, I, 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 y'all killed a million people. Between like, like that's modestly the numbers. Like it is largely believed that the numbers are actually inaccurate. They're, they're, it's undershooting what how many people actually died in both Iraq and Afghanistan because the U.S. doesn't want people to know how fucked up they were. Like they was going around killing people. So this is the last part of the segment, and you guys see how I'm gonna pivot to the Yemen story with this because the United States lost in Yemen. So you guys know I'm having a blast, and this is my my most successful tweet of this whole fucking dialogue. Every single one of them getting thousand plus likes. I send this one out three point five thousand likes. Well, I explain because I can't respond to all these people. I would love to. I can't, so I just send out. I just subtweet them. I said a bunch of veterans are melting down in my mentions because I call. If you don't know what mention is, that's my notification. I got. I know all you guys not online like me. So all the people melting down in my thread because I called out the United States military as the weak cowards that they are who can't win a war so they commit mass atrocities. And I said simply, don't get mad at me. Get mad at the ruling class who keeps forcing you boot bootlickers to take L after L. 3.5 million, 3.5 thousand likes after me saying that. So think about what's happening here. We are a country run. What, what did Jimmy say? We are a country full of children of alcoholics or something like that. What did Jimmy say? Right. I mean, that sounds about right. That sounds. I mean, that's basically it. Children, yeah. Chad, what did Jimmy say? We were children, son of alcoholics, something like that. Because I am calling out the crimes of ruling class that committed against you guys, mm-hmm. and they get upset at me. And I said, the ruling class forces you guys to sacrifice your lives for losing wars. 
Then they leave many of you guys homeless and suicidal, and they're mad at me for mentioning the fact that they leave your ass homeless and suicidal. Oh, don't forget high suicide rate. Yeah, high suicide rate of veterans in history right now. Isn't it like 22 an hour? Am, am I getting it wrong? It's something or crazy, bro. It's something crazy, dog. It, I can't. Killed yeah. the, 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 the one of the re I'm gonna put it like this it's so bad that one of the reasons the suicide rate is so high is because the hotline is always fucking busy because of how many people are committing suicide. But y'all proud, y'all so mad when we call it out though. Because I and I, I had a response while I was, someone was like, How dare you speak to the amazing veterans or way better than you? I'm like, these veterans gonna come back homeless and suicidal. Like, why you guys have this cult? And I've been aggressively calling out this cult because this cult get people killed, fam. There was exactly. veterans. In this whole dialogue, that was more upset than me than they was the military getting these people killed. And I was playing, and this is when they got quiet. The, the well, silent... Nick, I told you the military's full of fucking dumbasses. That's my whole point. That's my point. The ones that aren't dumbasses are gonna be like, nah, fuck the military for what they did. And everybody else will be like, no, man, don't blame. It's 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 whose fault is it? Like, is Nick's fault because the military fucked y'all? Because I could hey, World War II suicide, post-World War II suicides were nowhere near as high. You know why? Because they, they believed that they were yeah. actually fighting an enemy, right? They believed that they were fighting the good fight, even though there might be sounds that might uh, drive their PTSD up, of course, but it ain't nothing like going around killing innocent kids. Ain't nothing like that. They're no Nothing gonna give you PTSD like that, bro. Nothing. Unless yeah. you're unless you're Israel, unless you're Israeli, unless you're Zionist, they get turned oh, on by that type of shit. But normal fucking people like the ones that are forced to enlist in uh, the US military, because of economic circumstances, that's gonna fuck you up for life, bro. So I said, as I explained here, and this is the funniest part of this whole story, just to me, because I had like so many of these bots and veteran people come after me, I couldn't respond to all of them. That's why I'm self tweeting, because I'm like, I know you guys see this. This is my general response. I said, quick question Do any of the veterans who are upset at me in the comments know who these people are? And guys, Look at the thread. No one answered that question to this day. <laughs> and the silence after I said this, the silence after I posted these people's pictures was deafening because they didn't even know. If you don't know, because I did it like five segments on this, you know that these people died because Joe Biden used them as bait because mm, it was a recently Syria. So then uh, uh, Syrian groups that was attacking United States soldiers because they warned them to leave. They then attacked and killed these people because Biden said a few months ago that if, if these attacks on United States troops keeps up, there's going to be casualties. So what Biden do? He Biden leaves them out there so he can provoke regional conflict. So these people will sacrifice as pawns of a politician. That is what you're what that is what you guys are lowering your life to. It ain't and no I'm coincidence like, that these motherfuckers are private. That's a, that, there's no coincidence that these are private black people. These are private yeah. black kids. These are kids, bro. If you the E2s. Those are E2. Those are kids that just, fr they're fresh out. They and like they warriors? Like, huh? And, and there are a lot of people, who, and nigga, I want you, because I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah, there are a lot of people upset because I said the military is not made up of warriors. And people are like, what do you mean by that? This is toxic masculinity. I was like, guys, in, in the segment, and once again, I want the only people who know this stuff because I actually care about people in my community dying. When you see the segment where MSNBC was covering these kids, these kids were not warriors. One of these people right. wanted to become a programmer. One of them went to school to become a fashion designer, but they in fucking Syria? Why the fuck are they in Syria? And I'm the one to bring it up, and people got mad at me for, for the fact that I bring up the fact that they're sending you guys out to die in wars. So, Nick, I want you to finish your thought, and we get to the last story. Nah, I was just going to say, man, like, that's that's the facts, bro. They're young. Uh, um, They're not going to disrupt anybody's command. Like, they're not going to disrupt. Like, them being gone, unfortunately, isn't going to disrupt any major operation. Like... It, it's also kind of weird that they're black. Like all three of them are black. That's like, bro, that's like yeah. fucking insane. That's really weird. I in in Iraq, I can't think of any situation where like a group of people got killed and all of them were, were black. That's crazy. Because generally speaking, black people don't end up in combat arms positions. They end up in supply, uh, um, they end up in supply, um, communications, things like that. I, they one of them was in tech. I follow the story in good detail. One of them was in tech. One of them wouldn't be like a fashion designer or something. So, the, and I, in my statement, I'm like, why the fuck they in Syria then? No what? one asks these questions. They in Syria, and then the parents, they, they want to throw people out who do the bang bang. You can't throw, you can't get your 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 soldier soldiers killed. So you set up some fucking kids that the military quote unquote doesn't need to keep easily replenish, right? So question, like, it's fucked so up, bro. 
It's fuck. I gotta get up out of here though, man. I gotta get yeah, up out of here. Thank you, Nico. Yeah, thank you, Nico. I, 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 yeah. So what I'm gonna do, I'm uh I don't wanna rush through the Yemen story, story, so I may cover that. I might add the title. I'm gonna cover that Saturday. I got a lot to cover on, on Yemen regarding Biden administration essentially admitting defeat. But uh Nico, uh where can they find you? I know we have a much longer stream than we plan. Thank you for joining us today. Uh where, yeah. where uh, can they find you? So you can find me on YouTube, just uh, For the People Podcast or uh, Nico House, N-I-K-O-H-O-U-S-C. I'm on X, Rumble, Twitter, or excuse me, X, Rumble, Rockfin, and um, pretty sure, oh, and Instagram and, and TikTok too. So y'all can go find me there. N-I-K-O-H-O-U-S-C. Google me. Absolutely. Always but, good to have you, you know, on. Ignore some Why of the smears you that you're going to see whenever. Always, I mean, we can go all day doing this shit. Uh, <laughs> so thank if you. If y'all, y'all Google me, ignore me. the smears that come up in the first few pages. Y'all know it is still Google, you know? <laughs> All right, uh, people. Yeah, thank you. I'm actually going to do the Yemen story because I think it fits perfectly what we just covered. So you guys see how hard I go after the U.S. military for killing our people, sacrificing our people? Quick question for you guys. Why is there no anger in the black community about this? Why am I the only one mad about the fact that they said our brothers and sisters out in Syria and, and sacrificed their lives? Biden literally using them as sacrificial pawns? Are they sending... The, the child of a senator who's in the military so they can run for office later? No. Are they sending the white suburbanite kid who wanted to be a military officer? No. They send us. And my question, and this is the reason why I have a lot of criticism of the milk toast people in my community that allow our situation to get as bad. Why am I the only person that's mad at the U.S. military for allowing our black brothers and sisters die in wars that have nothing to do with us. That's why I go hard. I go after these people. I hurt their feelings really bad. Guys, if you want to see drama, bro, f- check out everything that happened with me in this military thread. These motherfuckers was mad at me for calling out the military, for calling out the failures that they had. Let me see if I find this, rep- this reply I had that was... Definitely an asshole thing to say. Let me see if I can find it. But it's I will acknowledge what I said here is an asshole thing to say. But it has to be said because there is a cult-like mentality that is getting people killed. Look at Brett Cohen. He's like this side. You got uh, guys. I had all these fucking blue check neocons going after me. This guy, in response to my criticism of U.S. military, he says, "Spoken like a traitor." Fortunately, you cannot be more wrong if you actually knew about which you spoke and you knew the folks in the United States military, you would know how professional, dedicated, and excellent they are. Now, based on what Nico just said, you know that's bullshit. So I had to hit these people with harsh realities because you guys have these fake fucking images of what a veteran and what a U.S. soldier looks like. So I said in response, what I think is a fucking banger, But it's also an asshole thing to say. But I have to say it to make a point. I said there's a good chance these veterans you speak of will be homeless and suicidal in a few years, but go off. (laughs) And boy, they get mad at me. (laughs) Man, you are just the least likable person on this app, Nick, because you're telling the truth. (laughs) So these people are more mad at me for bringing up the fact that your system leave veterans homeless and depressed, you guys were more mad at me than bring it up than the fact that the, the system create that. Because I'm tired of veterans coming home being suicidal and homeless. So I'm gonna keep calling out so people stop enlisting in the military. <laughs> Until you guys fix your damn problems. Because the only reason they get people to enlist is because they think the United States military is invincible. And they will be protected. And after thinking that the United States military is, is the same military projected in Call of Duty, they sign up to the military thinking they're going to be the next G.I. Joe. Then they come back with an amputated leg. Then they come back with PTSD. And then they want, woe is me. Oh, my God, look at me. Nigga, you should listen to the fucking warnings. I don't do woe is me shit with soldiers no more. You got, it's 2020, we, it's 2024. You guys know the damn game. There could be sympathy to be shown to soldiers who sign up after 9-11, war on terror, a lot of people still brainwash. But in the year 2024, if you want to sign up to the United States military on the on the devil's bargain that you're going to get free education and free health care, why should we protect your damn feelings? 
instead of calling it out how it is. The only reason why the United States war machine exists is because the, the participants in the working class who sell out the global working class under premises that they're going to get education. And then they come, at, come back with PTSD. They come back fucked up after doing fucked up things. And they want our fucking sympathy? I told you guys, I am not politically correct. This image that people had of, of, a, of a purple hair leftist snowflake that is not what rbn is in fact i am the person who turned conservatives into snowflake nancy pelosi style liberals and i can have liberals sound like reaganites all in the same damn tweets the amount of conservatives that was bitching and complaining about me telling the truth about the military i like i thought you guys didn't like social justice warriors i thought you guys was facts over your feelings i am a real fact over your feeling kind of motherfucker if i am hurting you guys feelings then maybe you guys should improve the state of the military. Maybe you guys shouldn't treat veterans like shit. Maybe you guys should stop uh, committing human rights violations. How about you guys actually win a just conflict? Until then, I'm going to mock you guys until the end of my time. You're not going to do anything about it either because most U.S. So, uh, soldiers are soft. They think, they think soldiers are special. Do you guys know how many soldiers I used to train with? You know how many soldiers used to, used to sign up to Brazilian jiu-jitsu? And they couldn't last a week because they couldn't swallow their ego. <laughs> when you first train jiu-jitsu, I told you guys a thousand times, when you first train jiu-jitsu, you get your ass beat for a week at least two, three months. If you're at a good gym, you get your ass beat for at least three, four months. Someone in the military, they do not have the ego to do that. These military people come to these gyms all the time and they get their ass beat. They get humbled and they leave. Anyway, let me move on. Andre ran at this point. This is another L because I was mentioning all the store, all the wars that the United States lose. This is another war that the United States has lost. They lost the war in Yemen, and the Biden administration has been trying to pretend that it's not a war, but it is a war in every sense of a term of the term. You have two sides exchanging fire. You have a set enemy that you're fighting against. It is literally a war, except it wasn't declared and it, and it was illegal. Now, I'm actually kind of mad I'll show you guys this first because I'm going to show you guys what the delusional Americans were saying before uh, the, the most recent news were Biden essentially waving uh, the white flag. I remember when Biden... He announced Operation Prosperity Guardian. After he announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, that's when you had all these same neocon military bootlickers. You know the same kind of people that was upset in my stream, in my in my tweet. You had them say stuff like this. As soon as, as Operation Prosperity Guardian was announced, you had people say, "Oh my God, the Houthis are fucked. <laughs> the Houthis are fucked." You have so many people like, oh, my God, the Houthis going to get it now. Here's another one. The Houthis are about to find out why we don't have universal health care. <laughs> oh, my God, guys. The, the amount of tweets like this was endless when Operation Prosperity Guardian was announced. If you guys don't know, Operation Prosperity Guardian was the coalition that Biden uh, put together with the United States, UK, and a few other European countries like Spain and France. And then after it was announced, you had Spain and France like, no, nah, we had nothing to do with this. So Operation Prosperity Garden, or Guardian was already off to a bad start because it was a shambles. I did a video about this. You want to know what I also said in my hotspot video when I initially covered this? When I initially covered this, I told you guys a few months ago, maybe I should find the video. I don't have it prepared. Maybe I should find it. Um, I might search for it. I told you guys when they announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, once again, I'm vindicated once again, that they are not going to be successful in their mission. And I explained, I was like one of the few people to explain how the Red Sea is much larger th than it looks on a map. I see you guys. Yeah, I need to take a drink. <laughs> I do. You guys tell I'm getting tired. So when they announced this mission, 
where they was going to have this coalition where they patrol the Red Sea. I was like, that's very interesting because no one mentioned the fact that the Red Sea is the size of California. <laughs> Do you guys have any idea how many segments I've seen talking about Operation Prosperity Guardian and the United States plan to block Yemen's action in the Red Sea without them mentioning the fact that the Red Sea is the size of California. And guys, do you know how many warships that the UK committed to Operation Prosperity Guardian? One. <laughs> so they was going to have an operation where they prevent the, the Isra Allah in Yemen who mastered the Red Seas, who know the Red Sea up and down, who control the ports, they're going to, going to successfully patrol and stop Yemen with one UK ship, like three ships from the United States, and they see that the size of California. Do you, Are you guys starting to understand what I understand, what a lot of people don't understand, that our ruling class is actually made up of idiots? A lot of people think that whenever the United States military, whenever officials announce that, oh, they must be smart. They must have thought it through. No, that is not true. They are just like us. These are people who got where they at. They are military generals. They're in the government because of nepotism and connections. We have people in our government that makes the dumbest plans ever, like Operation Prosperity Guardian, and people think it's going to work just because the government announced it. You people thought that it was going to stop the Yemen in the Red Sea with four ships. And I'm going to see if I can find my hotspot video. Because, guys, hold on, this, is, this, is this it? I literally told you guys this was going to happen. Garden to protect ship. Barity, guard, barity, barity. Oh, wait, yeah, operation. operation. I don't know this is it because I did a few videos on this. Because I'm constantly ahead. I'm warning you guys about what happened before it actually happened. I said before that there's no way United States is going to be a successful in Yemen. I think this is the video I said. I did a few. Let, let's watch this because this is when I covered it. Prosperity Guardian turned out to be a complete failure. Joe Biden, in order to protect Israel as they are committing a genocide, announced Operation Prosperity Garden to protect ships bound to Israel that was being attacked by Yemen. So the Houthis in Yemen was like, man, we fucking dare you guys. We're going to turn the Red Sea into your guys' fucking graveyard. So France and Spain is like, yeah, uh, yeah, we good. Hey, US, you, you got this, right? You got this. These motherfuckers over here talking about some prosperity guardian. I had no idea what they're talking about, man. I'm, I'm out. So let me tell you something about the Red Sea, if you don't know. It's fucking huge. So the Red Sea is around the size of California. Imagine you are patrolling California with only around six or seven squad cars and see how well that works for you. So the only way something like this could possibly work is if you have a massive coalition with the people willing to chip in as much as possible, which hasn't happened. So Biden's inability to form this coalition is a massive embarrassment for the United States and shows exactly how isolated the United States and Israel actually are. This also highlights the bravery and the amazing tactics that Yemen is using to resist Israel. Remember, these attacks in the Red Sea ends when Israel ends their siege and their genocide of the Palestinians in Gaza. In fact, not only is what Yemen doing is morally right, they are legally in the right as well. According to the genocide conventions, not only should countries do everything they can to intervene in the genocide, they are obligated to, including targeting private entities that benefit from and enable the genocide. So kudos to Yemen for actually doing something about a genocide instead of being like other cowardly states who just sign on to ridiculous, useless UN resolutions. Let's see, let's see, so something about the rest, something about the rest, see, if you don't know. It's fucking huge. So, the so why did it take me a college dropout to explain how this wasn't going to work? This is, well, I think two months ago. Why do you guys think this coalition fell apart? You had France and Spain that heard the plan from the Biden administration and their response was, 
You guys have to be the dumbest, most incompetent government ever known to man. There is no way we will ever spend any resources on that. I might have added a little flavor to that. <laughs> that situation was a position, though. So now let's get to what just happened. What can only be described as a massive, embarrassing L for the Biden administration. Rest the attacks. Diplomatic win for Houthis. <laughs> so the media is now finally catching up to where we was, where I was months ago. You had these morons, these neocons on Twitter. The Houthis are fucked. The Houthis are about to find out why we don't have universal health care. And I just found this because it was like, guys, there were so many tweets. I wish I could have more of these receipts to show you guys. When Operation Prosperity Guardian was announced, there were so many of these delusional neocons. Once again, these same people who think the United States can't lose, they assume just because the United States military is against Yemen, they can defeat Yemen. They learned the same lesson that was learned in Vietnam. You guys are good at fighting in Europe and America. You guys are not good at fighting over there. The same way you guys are not good at fighting at, you guys not, you won't win in Iran. You want to know who knows everything about the Red Sea? You want to know who has control of the ports? The Insar Allah, known as the Houthis. So you're not going to defeat the Houthis in their back fucking yard. You're not going to defeat them in their backyard when they mastered the art of sea warfare. There was a country full of pirates for fuck's sakes, but you guys think you're just going to go to the Red Sea and stop them? Do you guys have any idea how fucking stupid our ruling class is? That they thought they, this was going to happen? And people just bought it. I remember there were Fox News segments like, man, the, the Houthis better stop. They better take an off ramp. They're, we're going to kill all the Houthis. Damn. We dropped 100 and 48 bombs on Yemen since the start of this year. The United States and UK, I should say. We bombed Yemen 148 times this year. Now question, do you guys think that it was about winning against the Insar Allah, or was it about pro providing money and profit for the military industrial complex who supplied those bombs. It's not about successful war. It's about profitable, profitable, never-ending war. So I see where it said the answer a lot was never scared. Yeah. They even said, let me see if I can find this. Uh Resty. They said something that was gangster as hell. Um Great. Oh, yeah. Uh, the rest. Oh, yeah, there it is. I found it. When they announced Operation Prosperity Guardian, Yemen was like, excuse me? <laughs> you, guys, you guys think you're going to defeat us in the Red Sea? <laughs> okay, bro. If you guys come over here in the Red Sea, we're going to turn the Red Sea into a graveyard of United States and UK ships. And I still remember when they said that, and it was the most gangster shit I ever heard in my life. And they, uh, I think there was like a casualty there. I'll, don't quote me. I'm, I'm pretty sure there was a Navy person who was killed. But despite all the bombings, the United States realized they can't defeat these motherfuckers. Which now leads to Biden having another embarrassing disaster here. This is a disaster for Biden in the United States. This is Yemen and the Insar Allah being vindicated in their direct action opposing genocide. Now you have China and Russia who reached an agreement with Yemen. So now Yemen is going to allow China and Russia ships in the Red Sea. In fact, earlier this week, there was a Russian warship that entered the Red Sea backing up the Insar Allah. So now after the Russian warship, Enter the Red Sea. Then a few days later, the United States was like, all right, we're done. We out of here. <laughs> if you can't tell, I am greatly enjoying this story. Here's just one, here's one receipt here. Russian warship 
enter Red Sea with a signed mission amidst Houthi attacks. So this came out a few days ago, March 29th, and then immediately after this happened, the Biden administration was like, all right, this shit is over. The United States has taken L after L after L my entire lifetime, and it's crazy how people in the military can't see it. This is another giant L for the United States. You want to know how embarrassing this is for the United States? The United States, in order to get Yemen and the Insular Law to stop their attacks, they offered to revoke the terrorist designation on Yemen. <laughs> Guys, I was laughing so hard when I first read that. Why the fuck would Yemen agree to that deal? You guys realize that Biden put Yemen back on the terrorist uh, designation list because of their direct action in the Red Sea. So what the Biden administration said to Yemen is, will you guys please stop? Will you guys st please stop? If you guys stop, will you guys will take you off the list that we just put you back on? <laughs> Why would Yemen give a fuck about that? <laughs> they don't. Yemen don't care about being put on a terrorist list. In fact, that's why they were put on a terrorist list, because of their action. In fact, the United States military was designated as terrorists in Yemen. So why would Yemen care if the United States promises to take their, uh, revoke their terrorist designation? They don't. This is literally pure panic. This is pure panic on behalf of the Biden administration. The NSR law has no reason to stop. They won't stop. I will be literally in shambles and shocked that they stopped, but they won't because of this. They don't care. They said that the Western terrorist designation means nothing. They think the West is terrorist. If they care about the terrorist designation, they will never did it, the action against Israel in the first place. There's only one way you stop the action in the Red Sea. That is if you end the genocide in the support of genocide in Gaza. I said weeks ago on Nick at Night that Yemen and the Insar Allah completely and utterly checkmated the West. They have the West in checkmate. And the corporate media was in denial over this. Why do you guys think I've been covering this story so much? I saw this train wreck coming slowly. And it has been one of the most satisfying stories for me to cover. Because as someone who, who hate incrementalism, as someone who despises electoral uh, politics as the only way to solve a problem, you had Israel in Yemen that actually did direct, direct action that did so much damage to the Israeli economy, to the United States standing in the world. What Yemen did here in the Red Sea will go down in legend. And it will be one of the only, they're the only country that actually had the balls to put military force, their life on the line for this. You had South Africa that risked a lot by putting the trial up at the ICJ. You had Yemen. Shame on the rest of the Arab countries who couldn't do anything near this. Iran said they want they about to destroy Israel, but that's because Israel attacked them. Yemen gained nothing from this, my friend. Yemen gained nothing from this except respect, and now they got it. So I think I, should, I, I, I think I can end it there. I don't need to rant and rave anymore. <laughs> Uh, this is a long ass stream. I planned an hour. That's why Nico had to dip. Uh, I'm glad Nico was generous. I told Nico an hour. He stayed too. I feel bad about that. So, but I think we had fun time. Nico, my boy. You gotta see. Uh, Nico's a Nico's a fucking homie, man. I got so much respect for Nico House. I'm glad he was able to join me today. I think I'll just reach. I think I'll reach super chat. I think I did. Uh, I, I think I'm just being a dead horse at this point. I think you guys can agree with the Yemen story. Man, it was fun. I love that story. I'll read some super chats and we wrap up. Um, big shout out to our Ben Landry. Always leaving the great super chats. I appreciate appreciate you, my brother. 
Like, guys, you really do help a lot. <laughs> we are we are working class journalists. We are at RB, and I take pride in this. I take pride in the fact that I'm like the old school kind of journalist. You guys know how journalism used to be a working class profession, just at the average Joe. You know what I mean? That's how we are at RBN. We're just average Joe. We don't we we're not making New York Times money. We're not making intercept money. We're not making big substack money. We are just people who barely making it by doing journalism because that's what journalism is supposed to be. A working class profession. So because of that, the margins are very slim. We divide everything. So when the reason I say this, these super chats, they really do help. You guys don't know. They really fucking help. Cause I'm like, fuck, I can actually eat something good. So it really does matter. So thank you guys. And thank Landrew for the super chat. Uh, thank you for 10 bucks, ARJ. Nick, you were psychic <laughs> when you predicted that the U.S. and U.K. will lose their operation in Yemen. I'm glad ARJ remember because I told you guys this immediately. I know I'm, I'm sound like a, bra- a braggadocious asshole, but I do take a lot of pride in what I do. I take a lot of pride that I can get these stories right first. No one was making that prediction. I was one of the few people made that prediction on Twitter, and, and I get... And, People accuse me of saying stuff on Twitter and ask for likes and clicks. I get that accusation from people who don't like me all the time. So when I said that, I was like, bro, when Operation Prosperity Guardian was training, I said, the United States and UK stand no fucking chance and they're going to lose. And that was one of those examples where people thought I was saying that shit just for likes and clicks, but I actually have logic. And I think about everything that I report. I take this shit very seriously. I do a ton of reading. I constantly check in myself. And that's why I take pride in the fact that I'm able to give you guys these early predictions. So uh, thank you, ARJ. Let me continue. Saudi Arabia saw what the United States wanted to do and said, no thanks. Now they were taking the L. Saudi Arabia has been completely exposed. Well, they've always been exposed. <laughs> they've always been exposed, but man, they are such cowardly cucks. Um, you had the, the United Arab Emirates who else? Let me see if I find a receipt. UAE broke diplomatic ties over. Uh, and I see it more. I'm sorry, I'm blank on the other country. You have countries that are starting to break diplomatic ties. Here's the receipt. But you guys are fucking beta cowards. The fact that you guys had to wait this long. And remember my point. They halted cooperation after they killed European and American aid workers. Not because they killed 40,000 Palestinians, because they killed thousands of Arabs. You guys know how fucking pathetic that is? That now Middle Eastern countries are coming up because they killed Europeans, not because they killed Arabs? Anyway, let's let's, uh, move on. Let's continue. Thanks for the five bucks. Don't even get me started on the military stealth fighter jacks that aren't actually stealth because that topic is fun. <laughs> I would love to hear your opinion on that. Actually, uh, I'm not. I I have I have multiple thoughts. Like guys, I have sympathy for people who was calm by the military, but I have to come out and speak the way I do to get hard for uh, for hard love to prevent people from making that same mistake in the future. I know there's people who are not evil who joined the military because they're victims of our society. But we have to continue to mock the military because one of the reasons why, in my view, I told you I'm a guy who just thinks and come up with theories. One of the reasons why the anti-war movement in the United States had been a failure was because even though we was anti-war, we still have this cult-like, uh, cult-like admiration for the U.S. military. It was that and the fact that we would demonize our enemies. We made those two crucial mistakes, which undermine the anti-war movement. We need to be undermining the military, and we need to humanize our enemies, because if we do, we completely cut the legs under the propaganda that the neocons have to convince people to go to war. It's all about strategy, guys. I'm Unlike the loser left, I'm trying to think about how, how we can engage in strategy to win. How can we engage in strategy to bring people on our side? How can we engage in effective proletariat propaganda? And if we demonize the military and we expose the military as the incompetent fraud that they are, people will be less likely to sign up 
You saw the comments earlier. If every black person in the military quit, the army is done. So has, how has that haven't happened already? That's why I do what I do. I was popping thing for the membership. What's up with the Uhuru movement? Uh, our brother Molly being prosecuted by Biden. We know that. I'm trying to get them on the show. They're very busy. Savvy had them on. I'm going to try and bring them on Nick at night here soon. Man. Oh, man. I'm two, two and a half hours in. I, I can tell I'm getting tired. All right. I'm doing that thing while I'm starting to mumble and shit. <laughs> Let's, uh, I'm a fan of Super Chat and we can wrap up. Uh, thank you for two bucks, DC. Motherfuckers waste time, money, energy swinging at windmills. Uh, I actually started this comment because I thought it was a good question. Now, I'm not even sure how my answer, to be honest. I started this because it's a good question. Nick, how would the old leftist, like social democrat Nick, react to this Nick telling him where he's wrong? Now, I can only speculate. Uh, and I may be over optimistic, but I would like to think that I will accept my criticism because I always had the belief that I, I, I was going to grow and change. Like even now, the 2030 Nick is going to be way smarter. In 2030, I'm going to look at what I'm doing right now. Like, oh man, I should have said this. I should have did this. I should have had this position. And I always believed that. I always believed in that growth. Always believed that I was going to be smarter in 2024 compared to my 2020 self. So I would like to believe that if I heard opinions of myself now, I'd be like, all right, I must have lived experience and you must have a lot of great points. Out that would lead me down the right path. Another reason why I would like to believe that I would accept the criticism of my old social democrat ways is because the reason why I supported Bernie when and that was a mistake was because my mindset was I'm going to support, support Bernie in electoral politics one more time. This, this is what led me down this path. When I supported Bernie in 2020, my mindset was this is the last time I'm ever doing this. Either we win or I'm done with electoral politics. So we lost and now I'm done with electoral politics. This is another reason why I like to believe I will listen to myself was because the only thing that held me back was the belief that Bernie stood a chance. So if if my past self told me, I'm sorry, my future self told my past self that Bernie failed, Bernie was a cuck, Bernie failed because of this, this, and this, I would be like, oh, damn, I didn't know Bernie was a cuck. That's crazy. Because remember, I had no reason to doubt myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's my best attempt to answer this question that's really hard to answer. I would like to believe I will listen to myself because, of course, I think I'm a good faith actor. Who knows? Maybe I'll be like, nigga, who the fuck you do? Oh, man, I became an old grumpy motherfucker. Fuck this guy. Bernie 2020. <laughs> who knows? I really hope I wouldn't respond like that. <laughs> oh, man, I must have became a grumpy motherfucker. Look at oh, look at the nigga. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Last super chat. Uh, I think, and let me check again. If the primaries are fake, so is the general. Absolutely. Let me see if I miss any new ones. Uh, hopefully that answer makes sense. I saw that and I started out like, man, how the fuck am I answering that question? <laughs> uh, oh shit, did I even read your your chat? Sorry, Landry, hold up. Let me actually read your chat. I now realize I probably didn't read it. <laughs> I was so in shock <laughs> because of generous super chats. So let me read it, my brother Landrew. Thank you, Nick, my brother. Telling the hard truth. Vote no on genocide. Free Palestine. Uh, yeah, that would been very. That would have been shameful. Didn't actually read read that. I think I skipped it, but a few more and then we done. I saw new uh, super chats. I appreciate the big show today. I know I had to take a week off. I was very exhausted. I feel bad for that, but I think if I did Nick at night, Thursday and Tuesday, it would have been a horrible show. I was so burnt out. Also on Tuesday, I had my brother. Another reason why I didn't go live on Tuesday because my brother was around. I don't like going live when my family's here. You know what I mean? So. That's another reason I didn't go live Tuesday, but if I felt like I felt like if I went live Tuesday and Thursday, it would have been a bad show. I was absolutely not feeling it. <laughs> so I appreciate you guys showing support today. Big shout out to Catherine for the 499. I will be back on regular schedule tomorrow, uh, next week. Um, in fact, I used to release four uh three hotspot videos a week. I am now 
releasing four hotspot videos a week. Hotspot asked me to make four for them because you guys know I've been releasing banger after banger on hotspot. So they asked me to make another video a week. I'm like, bet I'm down. So there's gonna be four hotspot videos coming out a week, and I'm gonna go back to Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. I just need a week off. That's all it was. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for the forty nine nine nine. Thank you for the ten bucks. Baser maternal rage, based and blessed. Big poor unite. <laughs> Are being in the pockets of big poor. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the show. Um, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back on normal schedule Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday next week. Um, no Nick at noon tomorrow. In fact, I think this week I'm gonna be busy. It's WrestleMania weekend. You guys know a lot of people. I got a big family full of wrestling fans, so it's gonna be fun. Anyway, thank you guys for uh, watching. This was a long ass show. Wasn't planned, but. Uh, hope you uh, check out Nico House and Hotspot. Have a great weekend, guys. Take care.